You ready? Yes, I have to close the, I, I closed the Facebook Live, I think. Yeah, I did. Wait, you see me? Wait. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Radia Hubbard, and we are, and I would like to welcome you to the 14th annual Great Midwest Book Fest. And just to tell you a little bit about the book fest, this book fest is usually held in person every year in June um, in the Milwaukee area. But for the last two years, of course, we had shifted it to, we had actually shifted it to online. So I would like to welcome you today. And just a small programming note, um, due to unforeseen circumstances, um, Trice Hickman will not be joining us today. Um, however, we still have, um, we will have in her place, um, Milena Kai. Um, she will share, um, she will share um, her books and projects and everything else. And I just want to thank everyone for um, coming today. And I do want to do a special, um, a special uh, shout out to Cheryl McClinton because she is the one that went ahead and um, she is a part of our big surprise. She actually donated uh, four mm -hmm. Amazon gift cards that are going to be given away randomly to everyone who went ahead mm -hmm. and um, registered today. Mm -hmm. So we are going to get started soon here. So, the first person that we're going to bring on is um, National is best-selling author LaJill Hunt. And hi, LaJill. Hi. How are you? I am great. How are you? I am good. I am good. So, LaJill, tell us about um, the Hamptons. Ah, the, the Black, Black Hamptons. The Black Hamptons. <laughs> The Black Hamptons is actually a mini series that uh, created by Carl Weber and myself. Um, it's a new mini series that is going to be shown on BET. And we also have a novel of that same title as well. It is pretty much a story about a black neighborhood in Sag Harbor. So it's about people with money. Uh, and it's about uh, pretty much old money versus new money because you have those people that they are descendants that have lived there for generations in the Black Hamptons. And then you have like some new money where people that have like created Fortune 500 tech companies now move into the area and they shake things up a bit. But it's quite, quite it's amazing. The television show is beautifully shot. It has Lamont Rucker, Karan Riley. Uh, oh my gosh, Vanessa Bell Calloway. Uh, I cannot think of the other lady's name, but it is it is amazing. It's beautiful. We had a lot of fun writing it. And like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It is going to be a great read and a great mini series as well. Okay, so where so do we know when it's going to actually, uh, when is the Black Hamptons, when is the series going to be out? When is the series coming out? And when is the book going to be coming out? Okay. Um, tentatively, it's July 1st uh, for the Black Hamptons. And then it is August, I believe, the 9th for the novel. Good, good. Yes. So good. we finished, we finished filming before we finish the book, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. So yeah. is the book going to be a series as well? Yeah, it is. Okay. It, 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 it is. <laughs> <laughs> do we know how many, do we know how many books? No, oh, okay. they, this was kind of unplanned. <laughs> but it, it's <laughs> definitely going to be a book series. Definitely. <laughs> just based on just the, 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 the way we ended it and the, the characters introduced and we just had a lot of fun. We, we had so much fun writing it. Good, good. So what else are you working on? 
uh, Family Business Season 4 uh, premieres on July 29th. Uh, so we are excited about that on BET Plus. Family Business Season 3 is currently running on BET. Uh, Family Business, the novel, book six is coming as well. We are currently co-writing that. Uh, and most recently, I shot my first short film for BET Her. Yeah, oh um, it's called Happy. And BET asked me to, they specifically asked me to write it um, because we are in crisis as far as our black college students and suicide. Okay. So it is for the BET Her Presents Her Stories and Happy is about a family of two sisters and a mom. The older sister is um, a scholar athlete, 4.0 track star, quarterback boyfriend, gets a summer internship, like she is everything to everyone. And her younger sister is very troubled, very isolated, struggling in school, a uh, total opposite of um, her sister. And the mom is struggling to get the older sister to kind of like help your younger sister out. Like, you know, we really, really need your help. But it is a message to say, speak to your strong, um, always check on your strong friends and you're not alone. So I'm really, really excited about that. Like, it's my first film, like, yeah. You know, I've been writing for television for a minute, but this is my baby. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So how, um, how different was it for you to shoot your first film? Uh, it, it, was, it was an experience, it really was. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I discovered you know, even for writing on the family business and the Black Hamptons is I kind of, being on set is a struggle for me because it's very repetitive and it, it has a lot that goes into it. So I'm like, I just want to write the scripts and be done. Like, I just want to write it and, you know, here's the script, give it to the director, give it to the director of photography, y'all work your magic and let me just go home. Like, cause I could be working on something else. But um, I think working on my own film, I discovered that I may eventually want to go into directing um, just because it's like, okay, I want, I want it to be done this way. Like I want it to be said this way, or I think it should be like, so it, it kind of like sparked a little bit of that in me. And, and so, I mean, no time soon, but it may be something that I, I eventually would like to venture into. Okay. Okay. And let me see here. So what would you say is harder? Um, going ahead and writing screenplays or writing books? Oh gosh, writing books. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to say it's, it's, well, they're about, the, now they're about the same. It was a learning curve. When you write a I love writing scripts because it dialogue has always been my strength. I can write a conversation like nobody's business. Um, so when you write a screenplay, like that's pretty much all it is. When you write a book, you have to describe. And that's like always been my thing. Like I used to tell Dwayne Joseph all the time. Um, Dwayne can describe a tree like and the rugged bark of the branches with the leaves and the green and the, and I'm like, okay, it's a tree. In my books, I'm like, it's a tree. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, it's a tree in the yard. But, um, so when you write a screenplay, you just put like, a tree stands in the yard, Libby stands by the tree, like it's as simple as that. And then you just go straight into the conversation. But also when writing screenplays, you don't have 300 pages that you can, you know, fill with all of this stuff. So it's literally, you only have so many pages because you have to put everything within, whether it's a 30 minute sitcom, whether it is a 
short film, whether it's a whole movie, you only have so many pages. So you have to kind of like, does this move the story along? Okay, we got to take it out. Like, that's it. Like, that's it. So it's kind of like, and then you have to got to take off one hat and put on the other. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a transition, like, you know, you go months working on a TV series and then it's like, okay, now we got to do the book. And it's like, oh crap, like, wait, how do I do this again? Cause I totally forgot how, like, oh, okay. Now I remember, <laughs> but I, I like, I was, I, when I had to transition from, um, you know, screenwriting to going back to like, okay, your book is due. And it was like, I sat down like the first two days and I was like, I don't even know how to write a book. Like, I don't even want to write a book anymore. Like maybe I shouldn't do books. But then you get back into it and I'm like, oh, I forgot. I, I forgot how this feels. Like, yes. Because in a book, you know, you can say, you know, you write what people are thinking and, you know. And so literally I'm in the middle of working on my next solo novel and they called and they were like, pause we got to pick up this. And I'm like, oh gosh, what? Like, okay, here we go. But yeah, so it's, it's I love both of it. I'm just blessed to be able to do what I love and get a check for doing it. <laughs> what is your, can you give us like a sneak peek of your novel that you're working on now or the, um, the solo one? <laughs> <laughs> Just a snippet. <laughs> snippet. Okay, this is so funny because my boss, uh, we have a unique relationship. Like, we argue all the time. Like, uh, either we're arguing about scripts, we argue like, it's just... <sighs> so he's like, okay, I have the, like, this is what your next book is going to be about. And when he told me, I was like, I don't want to write that. Like, I don't want to write it. And so he was like, no, you have to. And this is why and I was like, I don't want to write that. Like, I don't. And he was like, uh, you'll be okay. Like, just do it. Oh gosh. <laughs> so, um, let's say this in August, I went to visit, I visited my cousin in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to stay here for like a month just to see if I liked it. Sure. I stayed until January 13th. And on January 13th, I went back to Virginia, packed up my house and came right back the same day. Oh, wow. Yes. So I've been living in Atlanta and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So my next novel is called Peach City Chicks. And it is about four 20 something year olds living their best life in ATL oh, and then, whoo, they got a lot going on like because they're in their 20s living in Atlanta so you got a Spelmanite one that graduated from Clark one that's a scammer and the other is a sugar baby so like hey they are living their best life so but um okay. so it's it's a legit hunt it's, it's going to be a legit hunt novel, like full of drama, 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 drama. And I really didn't feel like I was equipped to write it just because I'm almost 50. I'll be 50 in November, mm -hmm. but I've discovered like I can write anything. I, I really can. I just, I hate to be challenged, which is why, you know, but I love it. And you guys will see these Peach City chicks living out Midtown. Mm, mm, mm. They are nothing to be played with. Indeed. So where do we where do we find you? I am on Facebook as Legil Hunts. I am on Instagram as L A Cool Jill. I am on Twitter as L L Cool Jill, and I am at www.legilhunt.com. Okay, well, Legil, thank you very much for um for being with us today. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation. I look forward to being in person next year. Finally. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so, I, again, I love this. Thank you for the opportunity. It's always a great time to be here at the Midwest Book Fest and to speak with you again. I love uh -huh. it. Thank you.
Thank you. Radia, we'd like for you to do a station identification uh, for the people who are just coming in on Facebook Live. Sure. As well. So tell us where we are and what we're doing. Okay, for those of you who have just joined us, this is, I'm Radia Hubbard, and this is um, the 14th Annual Great Midwest Book Fest. And we have several authors here, and we're going to have a good time and fun and games. And um, thank you for joining us. And now we have Eugene Pitchford III. And hi, Eugene. How are you today? Okay. I am doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So tell us about Superhero Educator. Okay. Before I do that, thank you for giving us this platform. Thank you for the work that you do um, in these sessions. And, and even when we're face-to-face -face at Nicolay, I, I walked away feeling like so empowered and just, just re-energized to think of different strategies and, and, different, and different elements of creativity. So thank you for this platform. Oh, um, thank you. Oh, you're the welcome. Book, the book Superhero Educator uh, it, 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 it spawned from being an educator myself and seeing things in print and in, in book form that didn't really help me as an educator. And so after a while, being in, in education for a while, you kind of know what works, what doesn't work. And uh, myself and my co-author, we kind of narrowed it down to like, like 15 attributes that, that make educators like the best of the best. And we just kind of start writing from there. And it, it's, it's, it's been a phenomenal process. Having the book has opened up so many doors, but touched so many lives of educators and non-educators. Um, the, the principles in the book, I think, goes far beyond the space of education. Um, we've had nurses use our book as a case study, social workers, counselors. And I know, and I have to say this, and, and you'll probably laugh at this, I'm, I'm probably one of the few people on this panel that is a nonfiction writer. And so I, I, know, I know that, and I understand it, and I get it, but let me tell you all this. You all either have children or grandchildren that are in school, and, and, and you know the, a, a good teacher when you see one. You, you also have people in your neighborhood that, that are, are educators also. So even though if, if you're just not into like education books, you could definitely forward this information to someone in education. And that's how I like to put the spin on it. Okay. And what have you, um, so how has your, um, what would you say is harder being an educator or an author? Oh, that's a great question. I've never been asked that question. Um, I think they could both be challenging, but you know, when, when you're in a real life building with 30 kids in the room, or if you're in a real life school with five, 600 in the building at one time, um, I, I would have to say uh, being an educator is, is it might be more difficult, but I think they both have some difficult aspects of it uh, uh, becoming great. Uh, but I think all are important. And how has your book, um... How has different educate, educator, educators, educators, educators? Um, Can you say the last part? Your last part. Sure, I'm sorry. Um, as far as um, you know, the book is geared, you know, towards educators. How have um, how has the response been, you know, among educators okay. as far as your? Um, mm -hmm. it, it's phenomenal. Like we literally wrote it for people that we we had specific people. We had like a like a, a board on the wall, and we were writing to their faces. Um, it's been a phenomenal resource for college students. It's been a phenomenal resource for new teachers. And it's a phenomenal resource for our experienced teachers to either validate themselves or help them goal set to be the best educator that they can be. Um, like I said before, it's also been used with nurses, social workers, counselors, um, you, you, and, and you name it, we, we've been in the space. Uh, the book has also opened up a lot of doors for me as far as consulting, podcasting, and it's, it's, it's crazy to think of just one book can branch off so many different ways. And after listening to like the first uh, presenter that you had, you know, it had me thinking, okay, it's time for the next one now. It's time for the next one. But, uh, but that's to answer your question. It, 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 it has a life of its own. It, it's, it's greater than what we could have ever imagined. Uh, we've had people comment with tears, like this is amazing. This is the piece that I was missing. And it's just, it's, it's a phenomenal process to get that love back. And, I, and I'm sure everyone you have on here 
it, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. It just stops you. It, it takes your breath away. And if this can help a teacher, it's going to help the students they serve. So it's, it's a process that never ends. Sorry about that. Yeah, you have to unmute your mic. Yes, I just unmuted it. Sorry about that. Um, are you working? Are you working on anything currently? Yes, um, we have slowly begun the process of writing a uh, a superhero parent book, giving strategies for parents to give them the tools to help them have their children be the most successful they could be going into a school or once they're in school. Um, we are using our book as the headquarters. We are also planning on uh, beginning like next week on developing a, a teacher mentor program with our book being the focal point um, and just really helping our, our educators have all the support that they could possibly get because this is tough out there for education post COVID. It was hard before, but it's even harder now. So we need more superhero educators. Okay, okay. And um, what would you say is um, the best thing that you've learned about the book industry as a whole? There are a couple of things that I, that I noticed in the book industry, um, positive and negative. Um, one, one of the first things, I, this is why I love what you do, because you're, you're willing to share. You're willing to share the resources. You're willing to connect. But one of the things I initially learned right away is people aren't willing to, people weren't as willing to share connections because they everybody looked at everyone as competition. Like I, I met a lady that had phenomenal resources and she was writing fiction. And I'm like, but I'm nonfiction. Our, our, our market groups are, are totally different. And she was unwilling to share re, like information. I'm not asking her like how much money you make or this, this, and this. I'm just saying like, who are some contact people I should know? Mm -hmm. But once my book was out there and it was doing good, that same lady came back around. So let me know like, like the product was, was, was key. Like once I had the product and she could see the product, she was more willing to open up. So that's, that's one thing that I've, I've learned ab about the writing industry. Um, the, the other thing I know is there are so many people with the story, with the angle, and that they just need a, they just need a shot like this. They, they need a platform like this. There's so many people that have so many creative things but they don't know what the next step was. Like, I would love for you to do a thing of, here are the steps for these people out there that just don't know where to start. Like, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much talent, so much black talent in this world, in America, that, that it's just people don't know the next steps. And, and lastly, people like you are amazing. That's what I learned about the book industry. People like you are phenomenal and we need more of you. Thank you. Where can uh, where can people find more about you and your books? Absolutely. Um, if you go to Amazon and type in superhero educator, you'll see our book. Um, if you go to Apple and Spotify and type in the superhero education podcast, you'll see it on Apple or Spotify, whichever one you prefer to listen to. I could put the link in here. too. I could put some links in here, too. Yeah, go ahead and put, yes, I was going to say to drop your link in the chat. Yep. And then finally, on two more spots, um, TikTok and Instagram, um, Professor EP3, and then on TikTok, EP3 Educates. And you, you can find me in any of those places. And once again, thank you for this opportunity. Well, you're welcome. And thank you for, thank you for joining us, Eugene. Absolutely. And hope to see you soon. Okay. Um, and now we have Wanda Miller. And hi, Wanda, how are you? Oh, unmute your, wait, hold on. Wait, unmute your mic. There we go, okay. Hi, Wanda. well, how are you, Wanda? Thank you for Good. joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you sending me that invite. Sure, sure. So tell us about your latest book. So my latest book is called Brown Grove, and this has been a project that has been going on since 2015. Um, so 
uh, back and forth with my husband on ideas. And it started off as a short story and then just progressed to a series. And here we are, first book and second book on the way. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about um, your first book. So my first book, uh, it is called Ground Grow. And it is about um, these two siblings where one is the hero for another. Um, the female protagonist, Alicia, is uh, abused by um, enemies of her father. And to get back at her father, these people have decided to attack his children. Well, instead of being the father that he should be to his children, he is worried about his career as the politician. And her hero, it comes in the form of her brother who is um, mentally uh, disabled. And so when we see this, when we see the story, you know, we tend to think about how the fathers are heroes, but sometimes it's the little brother that comes behind us and is our hero for the day. And so she keeps it secret because, you know, this is her brother. She wants to protect him. Um, she knows it's wrong, but, you know, these people hurt her. And so now she wants to be the protector for her brother. And so we get to see the family dynamic and um, the issues that come along with that. And then, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole family series. So the focus is the three sisters and their families and what they go through. Okay. So what, um, what made you want to become a writer? Oh, um, you know, that's, uh, when my sister, well, I have two sisters, um, Wendy and Kim, and all of us, all three of us are entertainers when we branched out into different sections uh, Fox House uh, LLC, which is our company. Um, so for me, getting to that point, I can remember I wrote in college. I would write papers in college. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal. But then I started in maybe 2013, I started getting these images in my head and they were like movie reels. So I said, you know what, Either I have to write this down and do something with this or it's just going to disappear. You know how God gives us something and then he wants us to work on it or else he'll give it to somebody else. So I said, okay, you're not going to give this in. This is mine. <laughs> so that's what happened. So um, the projects and the ideas, they kept coming and I said, okay, well, what is this? What's going on? And so Fox House Publishing emerged from that. Um, not only developing my own books, but helping local authors develop their books and ideas. So that was that. So what would you think is, um, so how has your experience been, you know, um, running your own um, publishing company and then helping other authors with their books? It's been challenging and inspiring at the same time. Challenging because you want help in an arena that you've never been in and you you're on a learning curve so it's you're learning and you're challenging yourself to learn more about the publishing industry um now i've had help but very little help um i ask questions um a lot of our people have helped me and i'm very thankful for that every question every group that I've joined, that I've had questions, they've been able to assist me. Um, and then inspiring because authors in our area that I've been able to assist, they have, and I listened to the previous panelists and he was right, they do have so much talent that they do have that it inspires me to help them to achieve their goals. So if someone has an idea, first thing I do is tell them to copyright their idea first, even before coming to see me, because that's so important to keep our ideas as our own so that we can tell our own stories. And then we can go from there. I go from there uh, as consultation 
And then we do line editing, proofreading, more editing. And it's their inspiration. They really are because they stick with it. And when they stick with it, the end result is just a beautiful end result. Now, did you always want to go into self-publishing or did you try to do traditional first? I have done traditional first. That was a mess. <laughs> and I understand um, the, <laughs> the rejection. I do understand that. Um, um, and I don't, you know what? The rejections have gotten me to where I am now because everybody is not gonna understand your story. Everybody is not gonna get your story. Um, I think uh, the woman who did Harry Potter, I think she was turned down like what, over 20 times maybe? Mm -hmm. You know, un until she got to an agent that wanted to see and work with her on her story. Well, I haven't gotten there yet. So I decided to be my own agent and I decided to help others with their stories because honestly, people are not going to see our stories the way we see them. I can understand my people better than other people can. So when, when you're using a slang term, I can understand that and put it, put it into terms where other people can. Whereas another agent may be like, oh, we need to edit this this little uh, sentence here, no, keep it there because we can understand what's going on in the story better than anybody else can. So we can bring that out. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned about the book industry as a whole? Oh, that we need to be present more. We as uh, an indigenous community in America need to be present more. Um, I don't see many of us as publishers, as agents, as editors in the publishing industry. And I think that there's a disconnect where when we don't see ourselves, then we tend to gravitate towards other things that can best suit our presence. So that's what I've seen. There's not a lot of presence of us in this industry and there needs to be. What would be the one thing that you could give? Well, what would be the one uh, piece of advice that you could give to a aspiring writer? Um, I would say stick with the story that you are given. It is your story. It is your work. And then shop around for people who will understand your story. They may not be a big publishing agency, but they will be able to understand where you're trying to go. And then if you two can work together to get that story out there, then do it because everybody's story needs to be heard and you need to be the one to write your own story instead of somebody else. Copyright, copyright, copyright. <laughs> copyright your stuff. <laughs> so Wanda, where can um, people find more about you and your books and your publishing company? Yes, just go to www.foxhousellc dot c o s w w w dot oh, you, can drop it, you can drop it in the chat too yes definitely yep drop yeah. it yep you can drop it in the chat let me work this thing because i am on a phone let me <laughs> <laughs> participants yep or you can put it to everyone um, okay but yeah Yep, you can drop it in the chat. Okay. All right. Okay. But I would like to thank you so much for joining us today, Wanda. It was very, it was very good to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. And it was a wonderful, wonderful way to get us out here to listen and to fellowship with one another. And I thank you so much for having me. Well, you're welcome. You have a good day. 
You too. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So we are going to take a short break. Actually, um, go into Ebony's and then we'll take the break after Ebony. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so Ebony, are you ready? Hi, Ebony. Uh oh. Wait. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ebony. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, um, tell us about your latest, um, your latest novel, your latest project. All right. Well, my latest and actually my favorite novel so far is Damien's Windsor. And um, this came out back in November. Um, I've had a lot of great buzz around the book. Um, I love, I've actually reread it like two or three times. I, I order my books on Kindle. I order my books in paperback. I read it in every single format. So I really, really love this book. I'm really excited about it. It's about love. It's about black love. And I know that a lot of people think that, oh, you know, whenever I read a book about black people, it's always a lot of trauma and struggle love and blah, blah, blah. No, but what happens is a lot of times your trauma is what shapes you. And sometimes the right kind of love can heal you from anything that happened in your past. And so that's what this book is about. This is about the healing power of black love and, and I'm in love with it. Is this a standalone or is this a part of a series? This is a standalone. Um, all of my books stand alone. However, you will see characters from, you might see a character from Slow Burn in this book. You might see a character from Erica's Diary. Um, they all live in the same town. So they're gonna run into each other every now and then, but it, it definitely will stand alone. Okay, I know that you took a break from the industry a few years ago and now you're back. So yes. how has it been for you since you've been back in the industry? You know what, it's changed. <laughs> You know, I published my very first novel, um, Slow Burn, I was traditionally published. So I had an agent, I had a publisher, and, and although you still have to do a lot of things on your own, I didn't have to do everything. Well, mm -hmm. when I came back, there were so many authors I'd never heard, never heard of, had never read. Um, there was so much going on, and I decided to self-publish because it's a lot easier. I actually had a conversation with my former publisher about it. And he's like, it's so easy. You might as well go ahead and self-publish. And he kind of guided me um, in that direction. So I would say that anybody coming in <laughs> thinking I'm going to write a book and I'm going to get rich, that is not how it works. Um, it takes work, 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 especially if you're doing everything yourself. So put some money away. Don't quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> and are you working on what are you working on? Oh, are you working on anything right now currently? Kind of, sort of. Um, I was in a car accident um, back in December. And so I've had a lot of struggle with my injuries. And so I haven't really been writing. I think I've written maybe one chapter of a project that I really want to get into. But I'm also halfway finished with the um, sequel to Slow Burn. Oh. So, but between those two, I haven't written anything in months. So right now I've decided to take that pressure off myself and just focus on healing. Okay, okay. And I also see that um, with, your, with your promotion, with your books and everything, you also included some soaps. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. <laughs> okay, the soap. Oh my God. I'm really excited about the soap. As I was writing um, Windsor's Lord, as I was writing Damien's Windsor, <laughs> um, she's an artisan soap maker. So she makes, you know, beautiful organic hand poured soaps. And the whole time I'm writing this book, I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be cool? if the soap actually existed. So I got with someone who I knew was very talented in that area and we went back and forth with scents and we developed these soaps and now I have the soaps and with um, all of the shortages, I was not able to put the soap out when the book came out, we couldn't even get shea butter. So, so but once we got the shea butter and we actually got those soaps developed, people have really been buying the soaps and I've heard so many people say, you know, I was reading the book and I was wondering, is this soap ever gonna exist? 
and it does exist. So people were really excited when I finally was able to get that soap created. Well, that's good. That's very interesting because I noticed I noticed that too. I was like, oh, what is this? So that's that's very interesting that you incorporated that. Yeah, that's my first, I don't know, my first merchandise <laughs> from a book that I've ever created. And mm -hmm. um, there's two different scents. So one is called um, Windsor's River. It's a very, it's like a, a warm hug from your mama. And then there's one called Sweet Temptation that's just really down, dirty, sexy. So, so I, I like it. I don't know if I'll do it again. It's real stressful. <laughs> what would you say is the um is the most challenging thing um about self-publishing since you were traditionally published before i think the most challenging thing especially with me i was gone for 13 years mm -hmm. i didn't write anything put anything out for 13 years so when i came back nobody even knew who i was i had to reestablish myself and I had to gain a new following. And I think the biggest obstacle is gaining followers because there's a lot of authors out here, a lot of great authors out here. How are you gonna stand out? Why should they buy your book? That's what I had to figure out about myself and then start trying to market accordingly. So that I think marketing has been the toughest thing for me. So how do you, how do you, um, so how do you balance the marketing and with um, writing your book and then you your regular day job and how do you do all, how do you do all that? That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing it because I am very inconsistent. If I get really busy in one area of my life, then other areas of my life might suffer. I'm still trying to learn mm -hmm. how to balance everything, how to put everything on the calendar. I need to do this, 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 and this. I bought a Panda planner, spent $20. I've only opened it one time. So I'm still learning. <laughs> Okay. And what can we expect from you in the future? I know you're still working on things, but what are some, just give us a sneak peek on what we could expect. Well, I wait for characters to start talking to me before I start writing about them. And so the characters for the Slow Burn sequel have been talking to me for years. And I'm finally, you know, at a point where I feel like I'm going to be able to finish that book. Hopefully if I can just start writing this summer by the end of the year. But also at the same time, you know, Damien's Windsor, there's a character from Damien's Windsor that has really been whispering in my ear and I've even had dreams about it. So I'm like, you know what? We got to get up and write that because that's, that's a story that needs to be told because um, you are not the only one involved in the trauma from your past. Sometimes there's some people on the outside of that that need to have their voices heard too. So I, I think that, um, most likely the sequel to Damien's Windsor will come out before, <laughs> before that sequel to Slow Burn. <laughs> mm -hmm. So where can someone find, where can we find more about you and your books? Where can we find you? Okay, so you can find me on my website. Um, I will definitely plug that into the chat. I am on social media as, on every social media as Ebony Farashu. Um, mm -hmm. I'm even on Snapchat and I don't even know how to use it, but I'm on there. Uh, I'm going to start snapping. I've gotten into TikTok. So I'm everywhere as Ebony Farashu, no spaces, no underlines, just add Ebony Farashu on it. every social media platform that you can think of that an old woman might need to get in on. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <it's a game. laughs> I'm not on Snapchat anymore because I don't know how to do it. So, <laughs> you know, I always forget that I have it. And then somebody will say, my son is overseas. He's in the Navy. And somebody will say, I saw your son on Snapchat. He's in Dubai. And I'm like, oh, let me run the Snapchat. So at this point, I'm really just using it to, to keep up with him. So, so that I'll know where he is in this world. And I'm going to, somebody put in the chat that they didn't see my stuff. And I got to figure out how to get over there to the chat. But I will put it, I will put it in there. Yeah, if you put, don't mind, yeah. you can also send it to me, uh, Nalena Kai. Uh, through Messenger and I'll drop it in. We have a question from Dean Russell, if you don't mind. Did you see sure. the question, Radia? Um, when yes, you self-publish, do you have mm -hmm. to buy back unsold copies like publishers do with stores or do you prefer online? Well, when you self-publish, if you go through a distributor, such as like Amazon or Ingram Spark or anything like that, um, it's print on demand. 
So I don't have to worry about that. Now, if I buy my copies and I have a bunch of inventory sitting around, yeah, I do need to worry about that. But I'm not selling directly to bookstores from my own inventory. So I don't have to worry about that issue. Um, there are people who are sending inventory out. And yeah, if bookstores cannot sell that, they might ask you to buy it back. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's what the great thing about print on demand mm -hmm. is that print on demand really don't have to worry about that, but then you run into other issues. Okay. Okay. Yep. So go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Um, Mama Tony said, I am really waiting on the sequel to slow burn. Please, please. Yes. <laughs> So there's a lot to unpack with slow burn. I touched on it a little bit in Orchid's Nectar because Orchid's Nectar was actually supposed to be the official sequel to slow burn. And mm -hmm. it was a lot bigger than what it was. But as I was writing it, I was like, you know what? This is really only the story of two people. I can't tell too many stories here. So, so yeah, I'm with you. I need the sequel too. I need to finish that. <laughs> well, Ebony, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this platform. You have been in this for as long as I've been in this. And so when I did come back, it was great to see you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, I was glad that you came back. I was like, there she is. There she is. You know, when people are gone and then you see them come back. So it's very good to see you back as well. And don't forget to put in your, um, either put it in the chat or you can send it to, or you can um, send it to Nelena, um, right. the, uh, your, your website information and everything. I will do it right now. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. You have a good day. You too. Thank you. Okay, so now we are going to take a break. And so we're gonna take a break until, uh-oh, sorry about that. Uh, a 10 minute break. So we'll be back here at 57, yeah. Well, wait, let's say, yep, we'll, we'll be back at 57. Okay.
Hello, everyone. We just had a short break here. I'm Radia Hubbard, and welcome. want to welcome you back to the Great Midwest Book Fest, the 14th Annual Great Midwest Book Fest. And we are going to continue here. Um, I would like to thank everyone for coming um, that's in here in um, Zoom and everyone that is out on Facebook. And we are going to continue with, with Give Mary. Give it a few Hill. moments. Um, okay. I'm going to make sure she's here. She's pulling over to come okay. in. And I don't okay. see her name just yet. If it's gonna come in by a phone call. So on that note, until I see her name off to the side, let's go into, uh, how did you start the sure. event? So I started the, um, so me and, um, I started the Great Midwest Book Fest. Um, usually it is a in-person event that's in the Milwaukee area. Um, of course, the last few years, we decided to put it online, um, you know, just to keep the book fest going. I started, well, me and my late husband, Charles, we both started the book fest years ago because we saw that there was a need for readers to have, um, to have some place to go as far as to see their favorite authors because a lot of authors were not coming to the Milwaukee area. And we were just thinking about, and of course I went ahead and I traveled you know, to Chicago and other places, but we always thought that it would be good to have something here. So that's where it started. Um, just to have um, a local book, um, somewhere for local um, book clubs and book lovers to go. Um, so that's how it started. Um, it's grown over the years, and I'm I'm always saying, cross my fingers, and Lord willing, it's going to be back in person next year, and that'll be our 15 year anniversary. Um, so that's how the book fest started. Um, we've had a lot of people over the years, um, a lot of um, a lot of authors over the years, a lot of people who come every year. Um, there's people that's already asking about this now. And I see that someone saying, how can an author become a panelist? And they're from Milwaukee now living in Michigan. Oh, okay. So you can actually email me at rate. Well, I'm gonna put my, um, I'm gonna actually put my email in the chat here. Give me one second. Also say it out loud for those who are driving and listening. Yes. yes, if you are interested in being a, well, it would be in person next year, um, being a, um, being an author next year um, for the Great Midwest Book Fest. I did put my um, email in the chat, but it would be radia, it's R-A-D-I-A-H at urban-reviews.com. And urban is U-R-B-A-N-R-E-V-I-E-W-E-S.com. Mary is joining as a panelist. She, um, it said that she would come back on the screen. So I'm going to pull everybody off while she comes on and okay. off the screen until Mary uh, shows. There she is. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, how are you? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing great. How are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Tell us about your latest project. Oh, the latest project. Well, there's a couple of things. Well, film wise, I am working on Single Husbands as a screenplay. And I'm excited about that because I'm almost done with it. I'll be done by the end of the month. And book wise, Kunani Paradise, 21 Types of Female Orgasms. I decided to write that book because I feel like a lot of women really need to take ownership. I'm not saying don't be with a guy or anything like that. That's crazy. A lot of people are married. But even in a marriage, a lot of times it needs a, a reboot, right? You need something a little spicy, especially if you've been together like 30 years or uh, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So Pool Night in Paradise is just absolutely an awesome book, I would say for all women, and I definitely encourage men to read it as well because they can learn a thing or two or 21. <laughs> okay. And um, I'm actually working on those two different projects. Sure, sure. So what other, where can people, 
So what would you say is harder, um, working on a film project or working on a book? Well, for me right now, the film project is harder because I've never written a screenplay before. This is my first time. So that makes it a little bit more challenging, just understanding the format, the layout, uh, what's necessary, what to add in. It's a little easier for me because I'm adapting the film from the stage play that I did. So I have the book, the stage play for single husbands that I did and now the film. So the transition makes it a little bit easier for me. Writing a book, I will never say that writing a book is easy for me because you have to get to know the characters, the storyline, et cetera. But I do wanna transition more into film and television than book writing, but I am an author. I think I'll always be an author. I just probably won't put out as many books. Okay. Okay. And so what is the, um, what is one piece of advice you would give to a new writer? The best advice I can give to a new writer is to be true to yourself and allow yourself to be that creative that God made you to be, that you are as an artist. Don't overthink it trying to figure out what the audience wants from you and your characters. Just, uh, and don't be afraid to write your characters. That's like a big thing in literary because a lot of times people censor themselves. They worry about, oh, I can't write this because, you know, mom is still here or dad, was dad gonna think about me or my friends if I write? No, no, no. You never get your best work that way. So always be true to yourself and uh, let yourself, allow yourself just to be as creative as possible. And what would you say is, um, what would you say that um, kept, what is the secret to your longevity um, all of these years <laughs> in the industry? Oh my God, that is an excellent question. I've been in this industry forever. I'm not the old lady in the shoe, but I've been around more than two decades in terms of writing uh, literary. But one of the things is that you always have to market yourself and connect with your audience. You can never get like exhausted with doing that because the fans make me who I am. It's not necessarily the words that I put on the page. So having a true love for my fans, my family, my friends, my biggest supporters, uh, that's what really works for me in this industry and staying relevant. So just, just stay out there, you know, and social media is great. I mean, it's big now, like what we're doing today, like what you're doing and Elena. And so, you know, being a part of something, you always have to stay active in order to keep your literary career fresh. Okay. So where can we, where can everyone learn more about you and your books and all of your projects? Okay, there's two main places outside of social media. And one of those places is my website, which is shopmarymorrison.com. That's more of a web store and supporting the film projects that I'm getting ready to do. So that's where people can get signed books from me. I still sign them. I still autograph them, believe it or not. And marymorrison.com basically has like my history, all of my books, Links to Amazon, if you prefer to buy off of Amazon, that's all on marymorrison.com, my bio, et cetera. So those two places outside of social media, social media wise, I am at Celeb Honeybee, that's C-E-L-E-B-H-O-N-E-Y-B on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I ask people to go ahead and follow me, sign up for my newsletter. My link is in my bio on Instagram. So I'm just all over the place. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, well, Mary, it's so good to see you. And thank you for joining us today. It's wonderful seeing you. It's, and you look amazing. And oh, thank, thank you for you. having me on. Well, you're welcome. I'd also like to share, she does, she has a room every Thursday at 7 p.m. on Clubhouse 
the topics are amazing. So if you're on Clubhouse, make sure you're following Celeb Honeybee on Clubhouse, uh, as well as her room every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hot topics. You definitely want to be there. Thank you. And can I, can I just say one last thing? Sure, sure. Oh, I just wanted to say, I'm a breast cancer survivor. So if any of your listening audience have questions about, you know, what I've been through, and they can always hit me up at celebhoneybee at gmail.com. I'd be happy to help them or answer any questions they have. Okay, that is awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to have an hour filled with fun. Um, and uh, take it away, uh, Nelena. <laughs> right, it is tribe happy hour. Make sure you grab a drink. Make sure you are ready to have some fun. So all your tri all tribe members, you can come on screen now. We, uh, we're ready to have that happy hour. Uh, okay, Mr. Woodson just came in the house, promote to panelists. All right, indeed. So we have La Amate, Pat George Walker, uh, also Christine Pauls. Uh, Mary B. Morrison is also part of the tribe uh, as well. Marie McKenzie, UM Hiram, um, author. Let's see here, let me ask everybody, all tribe, you can start your video now. I took them off so you can have that uh, time with um, Mary B. Morrison. So let's pop it in. Now everyone knows how to play our bingo. Most of you guys have been with us on here. So we're going to play One Gotta Go. We're also going to play, um, let's see here, bingo, book bingo, all of those things, all of our favorite things. But first, we are going to start with round robin intros of the people who are part of Tribe. I'm trying to make sure everybody gets on screen. Christine, Daryl, start your video, please, so you can come on. Um, see Mr. Woodson come on through. He was on for a hot second. Let me put that in. Okay, so we're going to do round robin intros, uh, brief intros this time, and then each one is going to have their time with their uh, bingo cards. One got to go, and La Amate is going to introduce something special for everyone who is participating. I am going to drop in my email address, Melena Kai at gmail.com. For those who are participating today in the great Midwest, uh, book fest. I always want to say lit fest because Chicago has the printers roll lit fest. So the great Midwest book fest. If you email me Nelena Kai at gmail.com or you DM me on Instagram. Uh, it's at Nelena Kai. I will give you seven free copies of tribe books that uh, we have available for you to give you a little taste of what we're like. Once again, my email address is my name Nelena Kai at gmail.com or you can dm me on social media on instagram i check it daily so in that you should be able to um get your seven free books uh stephanie i'm waiting for you to start your video and on that note let us start with intros let me see okay stephanie you go and then you throw Sure. Good evening, everyone. Stephanie M. Freeman is the name. Murder, Mayhem, and Mysteries are my game. I'm a ghostwriter, developmental, and content editor, and a best-selling best hybrid author that was published by an imprint of Simon & Schuster. I'm also a proud member of NK's Tribe Called Success, and I am so glad you could join us this evening. And with that, I'm going to pass the mic to, drum roll, please, Yvonne Elliott. Hello, everyone. My name is Yvonne Elliott. I got Chicago roots with Texas boots. God made me, but Chicago raised me. I'm the author of two books, Rebirth, Stepping Out of the Shadows and Into Your Own Light. It's a memoir slash self-help where I share parts of my life growing up with a drug-addicted mother. I give my perspective of what I've learned through my life and the tools I've used to help me heal. I'm also featured in the marketing stuff, presenting your book to the world, which is available for pre-order. You can follow me on all social media, under author Yvonne Elliott, that's with uh, Y, two N's, two L's, and two T's. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to UM Hiram. 
Thanks, Yvonne. Good afternoon, everyone. I am UM Hiram, number one best-selling author, book coach, and interior book designer. My latest book is Queen of Wilmette, book number seven in the Queens of the Castle series. And you can stay connected with me on um, most social media platforms. Just look for author UM Hiram, or you can head over to my website at authorumhiram.com. And with that, I'm passing the mic to my brother in the pen, Daryl Bonali. Well, thank you, UM Hiram. Hello, I'm Daryl Bonali, Navajo author, um, school psychologist. I reside in, in New Mexico and Arizona. I'm author of two books, Nabo Story of Strength, Resilience, and also featured in a, in a marketing book that's coming up next. Um, when I'm not reading, I'm, I'm, when, when, when I'm not writing, I'm reading, traveling, spending time with my family. I'm very grateful to be a member of NK Tribe Style Success. You can reach me on all, on all platforms under Daryl Benelli. Thank you. And I pass the mic to, uh, to Christine Pauls. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Christine Pauls, number one best-selling author from Delaware. I am the mother of two, grandmother of three, and an accountant by day in the banking industry. I am a member of NK Tribe Called Success and a beta reader. You can reach me on all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Sociatap at AuthorCP. And with that, I will pass to Marie. Good evening, everyone. Sorry about that. My name is Marie McKenzie, award-winning and number one Amazon best-selling author of my memoir, Things That Keep Me Up at Night, in which I share my journey from childhood adversities to triumph. I'm a registered nurse, victim advocate, and beta reader. You may find me at marielmckenzie.com and on all social media platform. And I pass the mic to Pat Dew George. Good evening, everyone. This is Pat George A. Walker. I'm an Essence National Best-Selling Author, also known as Christian Comedian Sister Betty. I am a former recording industry vet for marketing and promotions for Epic Columbia and Def Jam Records. I've more than 20 years in the literary industry where Publishers Weekly credited me with creating a new genre of fiction, Christian comedy with my Sister Betty series published by Kensington Books and Daphina where I've written more than a dozen books, including Christian fiction, Christian comedy, comedy books, women issues, anthologies, and most recently participated in the tribe's spiritual inspirational Mary Hearts and Queens of the Castle. I am available on all social platforms except TikTok. I'm not on TikTok yet. And you can reach me by uh, typing in Sister Betty or Pat George Walker. And I'm also a proud member of NK Tribe Called Success. And I hope you enjoy this, this festival, I'm sorry, this book festival this afternoon. And I'm going to pass this on to you and Hiram. No? I'm passing I already back went. To <laughs> if you haven't had a oh. chance to intro, raise your hand. I don't have everybody on my screen, so. Okay, pass it to uh, number one son. Oh, out the tribe's number one son, Mr. JL. Uh, Go ahead. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, I'm JL Woodson. I am a graphic designer, author, professional husband. Um, <laughs> um, I'm also a visual design instructor. Um, I am the author of The Things I Could Tell You, Superwoman, Superwoman's Child, Son of a Single Mother, Knight of Irondale. Most recently, um, the, uh, <laughs> most recently, the right stuff and the marketing stuff. Uh, you can see pretty much, mom, you're zoomed in. Nobody can see that. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so you can find me at JL Woodson on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all that great stuff uh, at JL Woodson. I'm sure you'll get a laugh of my post recently, and I'm going to pass it over to Lamate. I laugh every single day. 
at your stuff. <laughs> you do most amazing content. Hey, y'all. It's your girl. I'm going to say my very first Midwest book fest. I'm so excited to be here. I am now a three-time published best-selling author, two of which I co-authored in uh, Powerhouse Voices Amazing Experiences on Clubhouse, as well as the marketing stuff, where we teach you all the marketing uh, tip, tips and tricks to get your book out there. So you guys make sure you pre-order. It is up for pre-order right now. Powerhouse Voices is available right now. And my latest book is 30 Days of Me. It's a self-help book that is geared to help women step into the best and highest version of themselves. You can catch me on all social media platforms at La Amate, except for on Instagram, where it's La underscore Amate. Thank you so much. And I'm going to pass it on to Dr. Vanessa. Good afternoon. My name is Vanessa Howard. I'm affectionately known as Dr. V. I am a number one Amazon bestseller with my debut memoir, From the Projects to a PhD. In all of my books, you would discover life, literacy, and legacy themes throughout my books. I can be found on all social media, typing in Dr. Vanessa Howard, Dr. V, and I sure would love to connect with you. And I'm going to turn it back over to our host with the most. Oh, that's me? Oh, okay. Nelena Kai. I'm a USA Today and Essence Magazine international best-selling author of 37 books. I'm a literary agent who has landed book deals for clients with traditional publishing houses such as Harlequin, Simon & Schuster, and Macmillan. I'm a book whisperer and I am a developmental editor. I'm the person that you come to when you're thinking about writing and publishing a book and I will actually help you to do the damn thing because I believe that everyone has a story to tell and I'm just one of the people who can help you to tell it well. And on that note, we are going to get started with a little bit of fun and games. Um, Mr. Woodson, yes. Before you keep going, you have to zoom out and actually uh, share the screen for your desktop. We can only see the finder view. Like you, we can't see anything that you're uh, that you were uh, doing. They steal my heart. Nobody's cards got up. I'll get it on the back end. I don't know what's going on today because I normally am able to do that. So on that note, let's hit with some of the one gotta go. Let me see if you all can see this. Um, cause I'm going from one to the other. I'm gonna have to share it individually and not my screen. I shared my whole screen. Y'all couldn't see that. Mm -hmm. Dang. Okay. So in here, in the chat, everyone, one gotta go, which book is it? Yvonne, um, introduce your one gotta go. Tell them which are their choices. So this is my one gotta go. So one book's gotta go. You gotta pick either the color purple by Alex Walker, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, Maya Angelou's I Know Body Cage Bird Sings, or The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. Which one has got to go? Okay, I'm going to pick on Jeremy. Which one, J.O., which one has got to go? We can't hear you. As I was saying, I can't really decide on this one because, like, these are classics that... Got to pick one, one though. <sighs> I'm gonna have to say the, I guess the bluest eye. Okay. Okay. I don't like that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Somebody the bluest the eye. Purple. Yeah. Unique, what would you pick? <clears throat> Who you was gonna call me? I didn't want to pick none of them. <laughs> <laughs> um. Huh. It will probably, oh man. <laughs> and the blue aside. <laughs> uh, everybody in, okay, a lot of people yeah. are saying in the group, the blue aside and the color purple. Okay, not the color purple though. That's just like, that's just mean. Okay, so let's uh, share the screen. Let's get the next one going. Uh, Nobody's filling the blue aside. Oh, this is mine too. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is my, these are some of my favorite meals. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Which one's got to go? I love breakfast, so I can eat it for lunch and for dinner and snacks. I hear you. Pat, which one got to go? Snacks. <laughs> really? Why? Because I don't, I, if I got to give up something, it would be snacks. 
Not a full meal. I hear you. Okay, Dr. V. Snacks got to go. I got to eat a full meal. <laughs> All right. So what are people in the chat saying? A little bit of everything. It's mixed. It's, it's mixed. mixed. But is more people saying chat snacks like the like the tribe is, or is it something different? Okay. Last one. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be ugly. Hold on. <laughs> this is ugly. Here we go. Hard one. La Amate, mm. which one gotta go? Mm. Why would you call on me? Because <laughs> you like music? <laughs> now, you, you know better. Mm -hmm. uh, which one gotta go? I'm sorry, Janet. I'm so sorry. Ooh. I'm sorry. Janet? I'm See, sorry. Now we can't be friends now because I love Janet. Like, I don't know if we If can... it was up to me, none of them would have to go. But <laughs> in this particular lineup, I got to go with Tony, Anita, and Shade. Oh, okay. Christine Pauls, which one got to go? Uh, Tony Braxton. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Daryl, which one got to go? It'll probably be Anita Baker. What? what? You don't clean up, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm a tribal war. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So, what is the tribe saying? Well, I mean, what is the chat saying? Anita must stay. Sade's got to go. Janet, Janet. Wow. Okay. Let's hear. Let's See, hear. That was, that was killing me on the Janet. We're killing you on the Janet. Anita must stay. Betty, I hear you, Betty. She has had Tony a for me. in Detroit. Those tickets went up to like $800. Oh my God. Okay, here we go. One gotta go. This is Daryl's card. I don't remember some of these. Is there, there's a cologne called, a men's cologne called Tom and Jerry? <laughs> what does it smell like? Mouse and cat? <laughs> I, I, I'm Hopefully gonna it's the Tom right chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna vote Tom and Jerry only because I don't know what it is. Uh, anybody know what Tom and Jerry is? I've never even cartoon. seen it. Okay, Jeremy, which I like the bottom. Yeah, it would have to, it would have to be Tom and Jerry because of the fact. Uh, I mean, I own Savage and. I've actually worn a couple of these, but yeah, Tom and Jerry, I, I have never seen that. Me either. Aramis is old school. When I was growing up, the Aramis was a thing. Stephanie, which one got to go? Uh, Aqua the gym, because look, I'm a cat person. I love my cat, Egypt. So I'm, I'm for the cat. Yeah, so yeah, fight the power. We're going with Tom and Jerry. That has to stay. <laughs> No matter what it smells like, it's got to stay because it's named after the cat and the mouse. Okay, I get you. Oh, we went retro with this one. Hold on, let's see. This is Daryl's car too. Which one got to go? Uh, Christine. Oh, boy. Uh, Scooby-Doo. Not Scooby. Ah. Uh, are you serious? Yeah, I used to watch all the other ones. <laughs> I know, right? Marie, which one got to go? I've watched all of them, but I would have to say Popeye. Mm. I, you know, I actually have a Popeye and olive oil mug downstairs. It's a Popeye mug and it's an olive oil mug. It came from an estate sale in um, Wisconsin. It's probably going to be worth some money. But yeah, for me. I'm a Jerry. Hi, this, it came back to back. I know, right? I know. <laughs> it makes me believe like something happened with the with the name on the last one. Yeah. Tom. I'm like, did, did you mean Tom Ford or something? No. I know, but when you see the Yogi Bear, hey, uh, boo boo, yeah. we got ourselves a picnic basket. Okay. It's going to have to be Yogi for me. You would leave, you would kick Yogi to the curb? I watched more Scooby Doo, Popeye, and Tom and Jerry. Oh. Yogi was cool, but I'm like, oh. I like Yogi. He was always eating, you know, and I like to eat. I mean, he was <laughs> always about getting his grub on. So I'm just saying. But we should have been paying more. We should have been paying more attention to Popeye because he was eating spinach, though. So that's healthy, right? Oh, so, so wait. Okay. So one day, 
Mr. Wilson picked me up from the train station, right? <laughs> and I was on a health kick at that time. Like I'm on a health kick now. So I was on a health kick and I was like, oh, he got in the car, he was driving. Oh, I left my salad at work. And Jeremy said, oh, that's okay. I got some spinach from Walmart. And I said, do I look like Popeye to you? He said, you don't look like olive oil. Eat the spinach. <laughs> Atlanta may eat the spinach. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my God. And this game actually comes from here. This is our variation of the real game. He turned me on to the real game. So, which gotta go? National Teachers Day, Star Wars Day, Cinco de Mayo. Oh, see, this is just wrong. Mother's Day ain't going nowhere. So we can, okay, Stephanie, which one's gotta go? What is it made for? Star it's Wars a Star Wars reference. Uh -uh. Star Wars fan, cue the music. Star Wars has to stay. Cinco de Mayo has to go. I don't need to drink. Just put me in there with Darth Vader. All is well. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, which one has to go? Well, I think Cinco de Mayo. I also agree with Stephanie. I, I, I start drinking margaritas. <laughs> and Cinco de Mayo is more than just liquor. Brown liquor, white liquor. Put it on the couch. She said, can you go get me? I said, yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-oh, Mary's still here. That sounds like Mary. But anyway, uh, let's see here. Radio, which one got to go? Star Wars Day. I have never been into Star Wars. No. Uh-oh, we just lost Stephanie. Look at her just, just hanging out in the chair. Just, we just lost <laughs> Stephanie. I still she don't says, understand it. The force will not be with you. Pat, <laughs> which one got to go? <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay. Okay. Hey, Star Stephanie. Wars got to go. Stephanie, you're going to have to disown some folks. That's just, that's just how it is. So hold on. Let's go to another one. Ooh, this is mean. This is mean. Hold up. Let me share this one. Ooh, look at the time. Which one got to go? Oh my God. Oh, this is just me. <laughs> Romance novels, memoirs, educational books, or cookbooks. Which one has to go? La? Um, yeah, cookbooks got to go. Ooh. We got, grandma, we got grandma's hands around here. Ooh. Right, like <laughs> you, just, just pinch and measure as you go along. We ain't got to. Look in no directions. No, that's, that's Pat's recipes. She turned in the recipe for a cookbook. I think it was sugar and spice. It was no measurements. <laughs> no measurements. It was a dabble of this, a scotch of that, a dollop of this. There were absolutely no measurements. A dollop of know how to cook. Gotta know how to cook. <laughs> mm, you okay. don't know how to make noodles. You do ramen, dude. Come on now. <laughs> that's it. Okay, Yvonne. Which one got to go? Um, I'm going to say cookbooks. Oh, what's the chat saying? Cookbooks. 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 They said cookbooks too? Yeah. And they must be some good cooks around this house because if they saying cookbooks got to go, that's this. Wow. Okay. So we're going to move on to, ooh, this should be interesting. Which one got to go? JL. All of them. No, I'm just fine. Um, <laughs> pistachios for me only because like, like everything else is already out of the shell and everything like that. <laughs> they still gotta, gotta get that way. But somebody way. already did that. Well, pistachios come that way too they sometimes. Are out of the, <laughs> the thing about it is like, okay, when you think about like what people, like even with what people put uh, pistachios in and stuff like that in comparison to what all these like, Butter pecan ice cream. Uh, mm. I don't really like pistachio ice cream. Pistachio. Yeah, y'all don't know how to live. Y'all don't know how to live. Radio, which one got to go? Um, I would say pistachios. I well, mean, they don't like no pistachio. No, that's just okay. Like I like um all the other like all the other ones I like, but pistachios they just all right. But one has to go is pistachios. All right man the ice cream is the bomb though that's what i'm screaming it's like okay one gotta go chicken soup beef soup fish soup vegetable soup 
Wait, Jeremy, Itch. which one? Wait, wait. His nose crap. His nose went all the way up in his forehead. Fish. <laughs> fish soup. I think all y'all saying fish soup. Radio. I guess it's maybe a Jamaican thing. If they like, what is that? South or something like that? Okay. That's Bahamian. That's Bahamian? Okay. What is the chat saying? Fish. Fish. Yeah. Okay, Walnuts. We can move on for that. that was one of Christine's, Christine's specialty. Ooh, this should be interesting. Let's travel, y'all. Let me share the screen. And do, 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 do. Bam. There we go. Which one got to go? Pat, Paris, Italy, Venezuela, or London? London, because I've been to all the other places. Okay, then you would want to go. You got to no. go to London. No. <laughs> all it is is proper it's America. It's, what do you say? It's proper America, Jim? Mm -hmm. The weather. I mean, the weather. Yeah, all the fog. Marie, which one got to go? Mm, Venezuela. It's not on my bucket list. No, but London and Italy and Paris is? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Venezuela is beautiful. Venezuela is beautiful? Yes. Okay. But Italy is my favorite. Aha. Uh -huh. So, Dr. V. London Bridge has got to go. <laughs> it's falling down. I hear you. Okay. What does the chat say? London. London. Ah, okay. So here we go. Let us go to, and then we're going to switch over to bingo after a few more cards. Which one got to go? So Daryl, roses, daisies, lilies, orchids. They're probably lilies. Oh, okay. Okay. Christine? I'm going to say daisies. Ah, Radia. I'm going to say orchids. Oh, those are my favorite. I want to say orchids because, um, well, one of my grandmothers was named Daisy and the other one was named Lily May. So, and then I like roses. So, orchids is left. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. What is the chat saying? Daisies. Yeah, daisies. Ooh, this is going to be a hard one. Here we go. Which one got to go? R&B, soul music, but I think soul music and R&B, jazz music, pop music. So, okay, so let's get a jazz. I thought R&B music and soul music is kind of the thing, the same thing. No, why not, JL? I mean, it feels like there's a difference. Like, you know, you got like James, well, James Brown is more funk, ain't it? Okay, so let's. Um, yeah, let's so I think soul music would probably be a subcategory of the R and B, um, like Sam Cooke or something. Right, uh, Jill oh, Scott. Oh, Dusties, Dusties, like old school. Okay, so Doctor V, which one got to go? R and B, jazz music, or pop music? Let's put those two in the same category. R and B and soul music is kind of the same thing. So pop, pop music, pop, pop music. <laughs> Stephanie, which one got to go? Uh, I'll say pop music. Ah, uh, UM. Ah. Uh. So we like jazz and R&B around this camp. We got some old souls. I, I got you. I, I hear you chirping, Big Bird. I hear you chirping. Let's go to, ah, uh, oh. Do we have some dog people in the house? Let's see. Okay, we got dog people in the house. Here we go. Which one got to go? Golden Retriever. Beagle, Pomeranian, or Dalmatian? Wait a minute, he got glasses on? <laughs> oh, that's tight. That's tight. <laughs> Daryl, which one got to go? Probably the, the, the Pomeranian. No. Yeah, I, couldn't <laughs> I couldn't see you with a Pomeranian. I, I couldn't see you with those little, little, you know. Pat, which one got to go? Golden Retriever. I asked, if I was going to get a dog, that's the one I would have wanted. Because was Lassie was a Golden Retriever. No, he's a collie. Mm -hmm. Okay, same family, but anyway. La, which one got to go? That ankle biter, Pomeranian. Which one? The Pomeranian? Yeah. <laughs> Not the ankle biter. That's funny. <laughs> Wait. From the ankles down. 
Indeed. So, uh, what is the people in the chat saying? Pomerania. Pomerania. I'm still trying to figure out. One of y'all gonna have to figure out uh, where we can get that Tom and Jerry cologne from, because I'm real. I really feel like that's not Tom and Jerry. You think she got okay? So I serrated. think that was a typo. What do you think it was supposed to be? Because, like, I feel like that might have been like Tom Ford, or it might have just been a typo where she there they forgot to take out the uh, word or replace the word. So it was she did one graphic, the graphic with the cartoons, and then she did another graphic, and mm -hmm. did ah that makes sense. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, I've never heard of a clone called Tom and Jerry. Cause it was okay. even in the same spot, right there at the last spot. There yeah, is actually so. a Tom mm -hmm. and Jerry, um, it's MGM Warner Brothers cologne. Tom and Jerry Warner Brothers cologne. It is. Yes, I just googled. No kidding. Heck, the it's bottle. A thing. Is the bottle the same? <laughs> okay, Christine. Yes. Yeah. Which one gotta go? I'm going to say the typewriter. What? We, got, we don't have no old school in the house? I'm done with that. What do you use? Uh, laptop. Show of hands, how many people use voice dictation? Show of hands, how many people use laptop? Well, no, because I, I use it on my desktop. Uh, show of hands, how many people write longhand? Yeah. OK, OK. There we go. There, that that solves that. Let's stop this one and go to. Oh, this should be easy. Hold on, it's going to be interesting though. Here we go. Which one got to go, Jeremy? Earl Grey. Why? Mm -hmm. Ain't no flavor in it. It's like I like my tea to have flavor. So, what's your favorite tea? Lemon ginger. Really? Or or sleepy time. Let me tell y'all, when I got sick one time, he hooked me all the way up. It was ginger, it was honey, it was liquor. I forgot, was it white or brown liquor? I forgot, whatever it was. I was feeling fine after I got through. I'll just say that. All right, Radia. Let me see, probably Earl Grey. Ah, uh, you too? Stephanie, which one? Strawberry tea. It's just something inherently wrong with that. If I'm gonna eat a <laughs> strawberry, it's gotta have whipped cream, naked man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it in a glass. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, but yeah. Okay, so now we got the cat people in the house. I'm highly allergic to cats though. I love cats, I love dogs, I'm allergic to both, but cats, in a house, I my eyes will actually close up. They will swell up and close. So, uh, Marie, which cat got to go? All of them. <laughs> Not a cat person, so I don't know anything <laughs> about them. <laughs> Christine, which one got to go? That uh, Sphinx cat, the one that's, if they're ugly, I don't want them. Ooh. It does look a little strange, doesn't it? Yeah, it's scary. Scary looking. Yeah, Yvonne, That's which one got to go? The Sphinx. I had a Siamese person growing up, so that Sphinx has got to go. That cat ain't got no hair. I don't know why. Oh, it looks scary. It looks scary. <laughs> Dr. Okay. Eagle's cat. That's why. Cat? Scary. Austin Powers. Come on, that's Dr. Evil's cat. Yeah. What is that? Don't make it look scary. Ooh, the cat said a sphinx. Some of them say all of them. They are too scary. Cats are <laughs> cats are devious. I'm just saying. Okay, so here we go. Next one, y'all. One gotta go. This is U M Hiram's. Oh, I see Jeremy. I said hi, rum. Remember the last time we were at the Great Midwest Book Fest, and I couldn't say hi, rum, and you got in my butt. All right, so you still said Durrell. Anyway, that's a different story. You know what? <laughs> You're not too old for me to put you over my knee and spank that. I'm just saying, just because you mad now, don't mean you still ain't my baby boy. Jeremy, she said it like, uh, who was that That uh, comedian? <laughs> this little girl. Ricky Smiley. This little Ricky Smiley. <laughs> little girl. Yeah, silly, silly, silly. Okay, La, which one got to go? Oh, TLC. 
Yeah. Why? Just wasn't my thing. They had some fun. They reminded you of fun. They did they. Yeah, but they was living a lie. Why you say that? How are you going to say no scrubs when you're fighting bankruptcy? Anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> but that, wait, wait, but, but that wasn't their fault, though. They was young and taken advantage of. But I'm you still like, were saying you don't want no scrubs. The scrub is guy. And plus, like, they had all the fifth graders and, like, grade school kids singing and stuff to us who was riding in the passenger side of our mom's car. Anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> oh, so you got memory flashbacks of, uh, I, I see that. I see that. Literally Christine. all the girls in, the fa- in your face, like, doing this and stuff like that, singing a song. <laughs> Anyway, they do have some hit stuff. <laughs> Christine, which one? Wasn't a huge fan of TLC. TLC can't get no love, tender love and care. Can't get no love and no care. That's just mean. Okay, Yvonne, which one? Uh, Destiny's Child gotta go. What? Okay, you gotta explain yourself because you know- I mean, they did, they did Destiny's go. Child wasn't big until after I was like what 18 17 18 so in Vogue growing up TLC was my jam and then Escape that was all that was Escape was my high school years like Destiny's Child came in on the back end I'm like who are these people I don't know them wait wait so was it Candy Barris and people then put your put your notes in the chat y'all the chat mm-hmm. people Candy Burris recently said that they would Escape would be able to take Destiny's Child in a versus battle what do you all say to that? Yes. Any escape day. would take Destiny's Child? I think so. Old Escape, not new Escape. That's the only Escape there is. I don't know about these new folk. <laughs> I only know a few of their songs and anything new. I only know catalog. from Candy. <laughs> Listen to the whole catalog. Escape was it. Yeah. I don't know if they could take. I don't think they could take because of the catalog. I don't think that they could take uh destiny's child though i just I think not, in a, not in a not in a battle like not in a versus battle does anybody else think that they would take somebody said candy is delu- i hear you diane candy is delusional thank you yeah. thank escape you but of course she had to ballads. choose her own what was that yvonne escape had better ballads to me mm. okay mm. okay i can see that but destiny's child wasn't about that ballot life it was about that Get the party jumping, jumping. Can I mean, you pay my bills? Can you pay me? They had anthems. Yes. I want a soldier. What I'm yeah. what is that? I'm a survivor. I'm, I'm I won't give up and all of that. So all right. Mm-hmm. Who gotta go? La, who gotta go? Um all right, don't kill me. Earth, wind, and fire. Goodbye. What? <laughs> no right i hear you girl i hear you absolutely positively not most of the stuff that uh-huh. you you like in your rap songs because you like hip-hop and rap they sampled earth wind and fire yeah they did and i love the revised samples absolutely love them um they are talented though was this something that i would turn on and play on my alexa on a daily basis now nah, you know i I bop and clean and write to some new edition, Boys to Men, Jodeci. It was just, you know, it's my era growing up. You know, these are the boys I rock with. But mm. I, I respect Earth, Wind, and Fire. I will say that. No, you didn't. You just kicked them to the curb. Pat, your turn. Who's got to go? Boys to Men. Oh. You got to explain that one. It's because the, the deep sounding dude ain't in the picture. Uh, tell them, tell them, Jim. They don't believe me. Tell them. <laughs> You're not complete. Them without him doesn't make sense. Anyway, that's the first thing. Why do you say that? Bays. Because he carried the he carried the Bays. He was, oh. Uh, yeah, it's a different sound now. Okay. Okay. It doesn't have to be Jodeci for me. Like they sing in cursive too much for me. I don't I appreciate this. I feel like I just lost some readers in the chat. Because I <laughs> <laughs> it was like we ain't buying none of her books. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that is too funny. Last one, and then we go to bingo. Oh, this is the same one. Trailblazing. Okay, here we go. I don't know how that happened that you got two. Oh, 
Ooh, y'all gonna be in trouble. And I'm gonna start off with Mr. Wilson. Bam, which one gotta go? Mm. Oh, God. Honestly, it would have to be Billy D. Not Code 45. What you doing? Oh, I, I want my man back. I want my man back. I've I've always admired Sidney Portier's acting and Denzel Washington's acting. I watch more movies with them than I have with Billy D. The only thing I've really seen him in is Star Wars and then um Undercover Brother. Ah. Uh. Uh, Dr. V, which one got to go? I love me some Billy D, but he got to go. We have two Oscar winners here. Uh, okay, I can see that. Marie, which one got to go? Billy D. He gets no love. He didn't get no love from Diana Ross back then either, huh? Okay. <laughs> Stephanie, which one got to go? So Washington and Sydney Poitier because... Billy D is Lando Calrissian, Star Wars for life. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did the people in the chat say? I don't want to get, get rid, rid of, of them. two, Stephanie. You wrong I for this. To. Somebody said you wrong Star for this. Wars. I got to keep all of these. Man, Billy D was goals <laughs> back in the day. So in that, I am going to bring up the newest, one of the newest members of the tribe. And she's going to, while I drop once again, because now the links to the bingo cards are so far down, everybody can't see them. I'm going to post them again. So, oh, Blair Underwood was missing from that list. I hear you, Dean. No, it was never right. After he played that role in, what was that? Why did I get, not why did I get married? It was the- Diary angry, of a Madhouse? No. Yeah, whatever the one that the woman put the grits on him. The Diary of a Madhouse? The one with whatever. Boris Kojo when he had an afro. Yeah. He had hair? It was a wig, Mom. It, you know Tyler Perry. Ooh, garbage man or something like that. Uh, Buzz driver. Buzz okay. driver. Okay. He has never been the same. Like, like ever since, um, who was that that played in Color Purple that played the bad guy? Danny, Danny Glover. Glover. Danny Glover. Mr. I, it took me a while. And Lawrence Fishburne, when they play really ugly parts sometimes, I can't separate the actor from the role. And it takes me a little while to warm up again. Okay. So Medea's family reunion. Yep. Okay, Evelyn, I'm going to post them again. You guys have put so many answers in that they pushed them so far up. I'm going to put the bingo card links again, and we're going to get to that. Okay, share. There we go. La Amate, you have the floor. We can't hear you. Can she? La, we can't hear you. La. She's on mute. There yeah. we go. Okay, there it is. I was having trouble. So when you shared your screen, it flipped my screen. And so I was trying to get back to Zoom. But uh, hey, y'all. My name is La Amate. I am a transformation strategist, master numerologist. My latest Number one best-selling book is up for pre-order. Yes, hit number one in pre-sales. And it's called 30 Days of Me. I partnered with 15 amazing uh, businesses that offer self-care products. You can go shop with them. All of your self-care goods for up to 30% off for the entire month of June. I know we're about halfway through this thing, a little bit more than halfway. So get go to these amazing uh, shops for all of your body butters. They have um, hair oils, body oils, uh, anything you can think of self-care. Coffee drops, which is a hair care serum. And um, it, it's just amazing. When you purchase the ebook for $1.99, you can unlock the code where you can shop at all 15 of these shops. The code is universal. So all you have to do is uh, purchase that and then you will email me. I'll drop the email in the chat. It is proof.30daysofme at gmail.com. And back over to you, Nelena. Okay, so now I'm going to share the screen, full screen. Let's explain a little bit about the bingo so you all can go and get, we're gonna start with Pat George Walker's card. What you do is you click that link and you go to the cards. Let's see, let me click one. So you'll see what it looks like, uh, bingo baker. 
uh, would be nice if I could just do this. And there we go, bingobaker.com. And it is not coming through. Okay. Bingo Baker, whip up a batch of cards. Uh, do -do 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 -do. It is taking me to here. What happens is when you click on that, chat, 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 full screen, You see these cards and what you will do is when I show a particular item on this element of it on the screen, you can just click the square. You have it where you can click the square and an X will, will, um, will show. I am trying to see, it'll show just like this and you click the square. When you get bingo, you need to put it in the chat. When you put it in the chat, you put the bingo card but you also copy the number at the very right hand side of your board that'll have a pound sign and five digits. You post that as well so we can check to make sure that you've got bingo. What I am offering is we have a few tribe books hard copies that we will send to you. You're going to need to email me uh, your address, mailing address, and which card that you won. I want one of you guys, UM, you take the names of the people who win and I will send you an autographed copy of one of my books or a tribe book. So in that, let's get rocking. Pat's board. Okay, let's go full screen. Once again, once you get bingo. Okay, let's start. And this should go pretty fast. Pat, get ready to explain your board, lady. Ready, let's start. Once again, when you get bingo, you shout it into the chat. But then you also copy, you can click that little pound side and it'll copy the, your personal board. You drop that in the chat so one of the tribe members can check your board to see if you actually have bingo. All right, here we go, Pat. Okay, this is my bingo board. And if you have the Sister Betty uh, logo, not logo, I'm sorry, the Sister Betty panel that you see in front of you just click, a link, just click up on it. Uh, this is one of my favorite books, Don't Blame the Devil. Somebody sitting in my bed, uh, another favorite of mine anyway. I had fun writing it, introducing different characters. Mother Eternal Everlasting is Dead. That's a, that book was my throwaway book, but it became a bestseller. I had to turn in a book, so I turned in this particular book, uh, it's about a woman who dies uh, clutching a pulpit and uh, her trip to Baltimore. This was my first book, uh, Sister Betty, God's Calling You. This is a little book that got me uh, the uh, three book deal with Kensington back in the nineties. This was something created by Elena Kai. Uh, she does most of the graphics here in JL and I just, copy them, I steal them. This is one of my favorite uh, books of covered by J.L. Woodson, of course, <laughs> It Can Be Hell. Um, I, it's, it's a fun book to read. It's all about a woman who thinks that she can turn out the pastor and they turn each other out, but they go on to, you know, real salvation. One of my favorite people, Stephanie M. Freeman, uh, don't eat her cookies. This is cruising on desperation where a bunch of single women from the church decided they're going to get back at this guy only they don't know that he's now saved and he's a pastor. Does anyone have uh, watch the chat to make sure somebody doesn't have bingo y'all. This was the first uh, book that Kensington put out the entire collection of the Sister Betty stories called Sister Betty God's Calling You Again. They purchased all seven uh, st short stories that I had and put them out in a collection. Uh, Sister Betty says I do, she finally gets married. Uh, this book is special to me because before my husband passed, I wrote it and not knowing that a lot of what's in the book would happen uh, to him. No Ordinary Noel is about uh, a pastor who, who doesn't believe in gambling, but when somebody in the church hits a uh, lotto, for a million or so dollars, uh, he doesn't want to take it. The church is turning on him. 
Somewhat Saved was a fun book to write. Uh, you know, the church mothers go to Las Vegas and you can only imagine what probably happened and what did happen uh, to, found out, to find out whether or not they really are saved. And this young lady right here is uh, the former me with makeup. <laughs> Holy okay. Bay Hymn is about two women who, uh, who deaconesses missionaries who become uh, detectives and they snoop in the church. Okay, so I just saw in the chat um, that we went through that. I cannot figure out how to play. You click the link and it takes you to a bingo board. Uh, and it will, from there, you put it on the screen. Dr. V, you have your hand raised. She's not on the screen anymore. Anyway, I'm going to do another one because evidently nobody, I didn't give people a chance to say, got it, that they went ahead and they got the board. So we're going to go to, who else has a board here? Hold on. Uh, Daryl, let's go to Daryl's. I'm interested to see what's on Daryl's board. He must have a new one down at the bottom. Daryl, uh, Spring Fling, do, 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 do. I'm going to copy it once again and put it in the chat. Now I would like for everybody to click and say that they got it. Go get the click on that and uh, that link that's in the chat. And then say got it when you want to go and get it. One of you all test it out. Click that link. Okay, Mama Tony's got it. Okay. I know some people at work, they're on their phone. Unfortunately, if you're on your phone, you won't be able to. Okay, Midnight Ace got it. Yvonne Bell got it. Yvonne Elliott, you got it. Okay. Click the link that was in the, um, <clears throat> that says Bingo Baker. Click that link and get your got it, got it, got it. Okay, so now let's go to this one. Full screen. Uh, this is Daryl's board. Okay, here we go. Daryl, you ready? And if you want Tribe to help you out with anything, we can. Daryl is, Hello. go ahead, go ahead. This is the first powerhouse voice um, book. I also um, proofread it as a, as a Tribe member. I love, I love the content. Uh, National Zucchini Day, um, as part of my book, I talked about us growing up eating zucchini. Stephanie made this um, promo for me, thank you. Knowledge is power. I mean, that's kind of what we are. The more we learn, the more that we can have an influence on, on our, our daily social lives. Uh, my grandfather was a Navajo code talker. His name was um, Harris Simonelli. So this is just a memorial to some of the, the, the code talkers that's here in, in Arizona. Believe in yourself, believe in your capabilities that you can do whatever you, whatever you can in life. Be the, be the kind of person you want to meet. Um, if you want to meet a good person, just be, be, that, be that kind of person. Marking stuff, uh, this is one of the books I'm featured in. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful. I was, I was happy to be part of this. I talked about marketing from, from the Navajo Reservation, which does have its, its barriers. This is a, a formation in, in Page, Arizona. Uh, it's uh, one of the natural wonders it's near Monument Valley. It's, um, it, it's featured on the, on the Navajo Reservation. Oh, this is one of my favorite books from Khadija. I really enjoyed reading, reading this along with, uh, it's written by, by Erica Davis. So I just, Wish I recommend this book to anyone who wants to a good reading. To stay positive, keep staying positive. <laughs> uh, native, <laughs> a lot of times, uh, us Navajo people, we tend to, to borrow money from people, and we'll say we'll pay you back. It's just a, a meme that kind of talks about that. And the native, the native, the native meter says, "I'll pay you back." Do they pay them back though? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a Native American thing. That's a black thing too. <laughs> uh, this was featured in one of the uh, children's stories that some of the, of the code talkers uh, when they were on, en route to, um, to one of the islands. Bingo. 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 Yeah, bingo. You all check that. Um, check that. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me check that real quick. While, you, while <clears throat> we check that, 
she was supposed to put the link to it. Um, I think we can still go find it under bingo board. You need to drop copy, not the letters. You got to click that pound sign. It will copy the link so we can see it. Um, what is this, Daryl? This is the mascot of a uh, for uh, the New Mexico State Aggies, um, my, my alma mater. Okay, there it is. She dropped the link, y'all. Yeah, she has it. And Daryl, this last one, go ahead and explain it, and then we'll go to the next board. This is a copy of my book, Navajo a Journey of Strength, Courage, and Resilience. I just it's a memoir about growing up on a reservation, surviving some of the barriers, and, and making it in life. Thank you. While I pull up the next one, you guys can drop your social taps in the chat so that everybody can get in touch with you guys. Take a minute to do that while I bring up the next board. Uh, do, 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 do. We did Daryl, we did Pat. Let us go to Dr. V's. Let me go here. Uh, Vanessa Midwest Book Fest. Here we go. Click. And let me. Here's the link to the bingo board. Let me know that you got it. Everyone drop your social tap <clears throat> in the... And while we're getting the board, I wanna share some of the things that Tribe has done. I'm going to, uh, hopefully I can do this right. You all let me know if you all see it on the screen because I didn't do it right the first time somehow. I'm sharing my screen. You all see Kings of the Castle? Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. You all see Knights of the Castle? Yes. Okay, then I'm doing it right this time. Queens of the Castle? Yes. The Days of Pleasure series, these are all done by tribe members. These are tribe series, the Merry Hearts series, the Grateful Hearts series. Once again, these are all tribe efforts, series that we have they're standalone. You can read them in any order. The Grateful Heart series, they're available on Amazon, Apple Books, um, Barnes and Noble and Kobo, everywhere books are sold. The Grateful Heart series, the Merry Heart series, Days of Pleasure series, the Queens of the Castle, Knights of the Castle, Kings of the Castle, and would love to show some of the covers that are done by Mr. Woodson, J.L. Woodson, Woodson Creative Studio. He's the one that introduced us to the One Gotta Go game. These are Stephanie Freeman covers that were designed by him, as well as here's a few more tribe members uh, and things that were done by uh, Woodson Creative Studio. They love the Real Housewives of the Bible. You'll love that. Another mystery here, Slay the Dragon and Iron Collar. Acts of Betrayal is one of our baby tribe members and Marze Scott, next lifetime. And of course, our brother in the pen, Shakir Rashan. Woodson Creative Studio does some amazing covers. So we've got that. So does everybody have their, Woodson, how can we connect with you? JL, did you put your stuff in the chat? Okay, I did drop the link to the next bingo board. We got two more to go and then we're gonna roll through these a little faster so we can get through these. Okay, there it is. Let me know that you got it. Oh, we actually only have, this is the last one because you and we did your one gotta go. So we're gonna go through this and then I'm gonna do, we're gonna do outros. Ready? Everybody who's got their bingo card, just say got it and let's go. I put the link in the chat. And whose is this one? Did I say Vanessa's? Yes. Okay. Yes. Full screen. Full screen. I put the link in the chat. Get your board and let's go. Let me know that you got it. <clears throat> Why is this the wrong one? So let's go back. Hold on. Uh-oh, this is the wrong. Everybody's got it, let's go. We're gonna roll through this and then we're gonna do outros and I will probably have everything together. I'm going to put your picture on the screen and then you can go to uh, do your intro. Okay, everybody's got it. I see Yvonne's got it. Shannon, do you have it? Mama Tony, do you have your board? The link is in the chat. We gotta roll. 
So if nobody gets it, let's let me get let me let me keep going. Okay, got it. Midnight Ace got it. Shannon, you got it. Share screen. Shannon has every tribe book, so I'm gonna have to do something different for Shannon Harper. She has all tribe books. So um, Shannon, I'll get you. Tina, I see you got it. I will hook you up some other, a different kind of way because you have bought. We she is one of our premier reviewers. Uh, she supports all authors, all events. Amazing woman, Shannon Harper, Harper Court um, Reviews. Okay, Dr. V, take it away. We're gonna roll through this one pretty fast. All About St. Louis. This is a book written by myself and my granddaughter. 314 Day, where we celebrate all of the foods that are famous for St. Louis. White Castles is famous in St. Louis? I thought that was a Chicago thing. It's here too. No, where did it start though? I'm not sure when it started, but when people leave St. Louis, they always come back and get some White Castles. <laughs> yeah, they want that slider. And gas along the way. I know, that's the, that's the, this is the cheapest place you can get gas these days, White Castle. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Woo, that was funny. Okay, what is this place? Um, that picture is real tiny. Grant Farms. Grant's Farm. That's uh, President Grant. He has a form that uh, kids can come and look at wildlife area in uh, St. Louis area. Red Hot Ripless, that's famous in St. Louis. It's a hot chip that you can eat that's to die for. Huh. Vest Soda started off in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and it's a really good uh, line of sodas. It reminds me of what is that, Burners up there in Michigan? That's what I was thinking when I first saw it. Tina Turner, Mama came from St. Louis, yes. Did she? Yes. She came, she yes, she was from St. Louis. She didn't stay here, but she she came through. Okay. That's what she was like. Okay. We have Scott Joplin, um, jazz musician, ragtime. Oh, so this is what Tanana Reeves Dude's book was based off of Joplin's Ghost. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Amazon number one bestseller. That's moi, me. <laughs> St. Louis Arch, the gateway to the Midwest. Maya Angelou came from St. Louis, one of the great authors that represent us well. Uh, Kamora Lee Sims, model, entrepreneur, came from St. Louis. 60 Days of Pleasure, moi, came from St. Louis. Check the chat to make sure nobody's got bingo. Oh, somebody's got bingo? One more. How check it, ch you all check, um, check the board to make sure she's got it. Go ahead and explain this one. My website, and this was my logo designed by Mr. J.L. Woodson. Oh, he did? Wait, wait, what? Well, all right now. Nice. Project from the projects to the PhD. That's my number one Amazon bestseller. Made from uh, St. Louis made, that's why again. Okay, so Tina has bingo. Okay, so we're gonna stop the share. And Yvonne has ingo, um, ingo, bingo, tongue tied here. Okay, so in that, um, you are, that we, need to, we need to check Tina's. This is her second time winning, isn't it? Okay, we need to check uh, that board. Did you all check it? Yeah, somebody before her. Yeah, yes. Rantia. Rain, Rantia, we need Rantia. the link to your board. Tina has bingo. Okay. Take those names down, all three of those names. Please email me at nalenakai.com with the board that you won. This is Dr. V's. If you was if it was Pat or if it was Durrell's, uh, so we can send you. Um, I need your mailing address and your first and last name. Some people forget to do that. First and last name. All three, Renata, Yvonne, Tina, Ra um, Rantia, I'm sorry, Renata, Rantia, Tina, Yvonne, email me, make sure I have those names unique. Email me and I will, your address, your mailing address. And on that note, I am going to put up the Tribe outro covers. And, and when your cover is up, your uh, promo card is up, 
that's the person who needs to do their outro. Make sure you drop your social tap or your website in the chat. All right, 30 second out to 15 to 30 second outros. Here we go. Hello, everyone. It's Christine Falls again. Thank you all for being here. Um, again, I am an author from Delaware. You can find me on all social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Author CP. Again, thanks for being here. Hello, Daryl Benali. Thank you very much for, for being, being here. Author of Navajo, A Journey of Strength, Courage, and Resilience, also featured in the mark, marketing stuff. I look forward to interacting with more people. Thank you. Dr. V, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next one until she- Her stuff ready. is glitching, Ma. Her stuff okay. is glitching. She will come back. We'll come back. Let me go to the next one. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, my name is J.L. Woodson, uh, owner of Woodson Creative Studio, cover designer, author, professional husband. Um, son number one son as everybody loves to call me you can find me at jl woodson on instagram facebook tiktok twitter all that great stuff my website is in the chat right now if you ever need to talk about book cover design and these are also my books that i also authored and co-authored awesome thank you and of course now the screen is so filled with jeremy's cover that i can't get to the next person here we go. Good, good afternoon. Again, you guys, I'm La Amate. This was, has been a pleasure. I am the number one bestselling author of three books. My latest book, 30 Days of Me, is a self-help book geared to help women step into the best, highest version of themselves. Connect with me at La Amate on all platforms, and I will drop my link in the chat. All right. And did I do Marie already? Here we go. Marie McKenzie here, award-winning and number one Amazon best-selling author, registered nurse educator, victim's advocate, and beta reader. Learn more about me at my website, marielmckenzie.com and all the social media platforms. Did I do Daryl already, y'all? Yes, hold on. Let's get to the next person. Here we go. All of these, yeah, and share screen. Mr. Wilson, you're gonna have to teach me a better way to do this, but it's okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Stephanie M. Freeman's the name. Murder, Mayhem, and Mysteries are my game. I can be found on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. If you're brave, check out my website, stephaniemfreemanauthor.com. If you're grown and sexy, TikTok. Catch you later. And here we go. Good afternoon again, everyone. I'm UM Hiram, number one best selling author, book coach, and interior book designer. You can connect with me on most social media platforms. Just look for author UM Hiram or head over to my website at authorumhiram.com. Thank you so much. All right, here we go. Hey, everyone. I enjoyed hanging out with you today. I'm Yvonne Elliott, Chicago Roots with Texas Boots. I'm a wife, mother, veteran, writer, and manifester. You can find me on all social media platforms at author Yvonne Elliott with two N's, two L's, and two T's. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so very much. And uh, last but not least, but bringing up the rear, I would say, I am Nalena Kai. I'm a USA Today and Essence Magazine international bestselling author. You can catch me on all social media, including BookBub and Goodreads. Make sure you visit www.nk tribe call success or my website, www.nalenakai.com. There are three free books on the homepage. Go to the homepage, scroll to the bottom. You can collect three free books there as well. There's two cook cookbooks as well as my book, Sugar Ain't So Sweet. It'll give you a little taste of what I'm like. Also, we have the Cavalcade of Authors on Clubhouse. If you're on Clubhouse, you wanna make sure that you join that club as well as Books and Beyond. Uh, Stephanie has an event interviewing authors every Wednesday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 
p.m. Central Standard Time. It's 30 minutes with a particular author. You come in, get the goods and go. So in that, we are wrapping up happy hour. Stephanie, you got a couple of rapid fire questions for us? Off the bat, just off your head. We can't hear you. I say, ooh, even better. Okay. Breakfast or dinner? For me, dinner. No, breakfast. Breakfast. Yvonne? Breakfast. Throw it. Laundry or mopping the floor? Everybody can speak in. Mopping the floor. Laundry. Laundry. Mopping the floor. Laundry. Yeah, mopping the floor. Laundry. What does the chat say? Chat, put your, your choice in there. Um, okay, rainy days, sunny days. Rain. Sunny days. Rainy days. Sunny. Sunny days. Sunny. Also, really briefly before you do the next one, Dr. V, do your outro. My apologies. I'm sorry, my internet was stable. My name is Dr. Vanessa Howard. I'm called Dr. V affectionately. I'm a number one Amazon bestseller with my memoir, from the projects to a PhD. You can uh, connect with me on all social media, typing in Dr. Vanessa Howard, Dr. V Howard. I would really love to connect with you. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for cycling back. So somebody, one of the tribe members got you. You forgot to cycle back to Dr. V, so. Just wanna make sure uh, Pat went to. Pat, did you do your outro? No. My apologies. Let me put oh, you up okay. here. Here we go. <laughs> My name is Pat George Walker, also known as, known as Christian comedian Sister Betty. I can be found on all social media, or you can visit my website at www.sisterbetty.com. I enjoyed this afternoon, and I look forward to reconnecting or, or connecting with new readers. Have a blessed day. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tribe. Uh, I have four minutes, but I'd love to um, finish up a couple more rapid fire before I tell a little bit about uh, Tribe. Um, what we do. A uh, couple of more. Yes, Mr. Woodson. And a big thank you to Radia for having us. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. know what? That's what tribe is for. They supposed to look out for things that I forget. Thank you. Every year we do tribe happy hour. We give away books and she allows us this space and this time. Uh, thank you, Radia. And thank you for holding the event. You know, you kept it going and, you know, we, we support you. Tribe always have loved you. We come in person when the event is in person. So when you do it next year, you'll see some tribe members roll up there to Milwaukee uh, and, and also get some grub while we're up there, but that's a different story. So thank you so much, Radia, and much love to you. We have three minutes before the next um, person will come on because I was supposed to have 10 minutes, but I'm tribe, so tribe gets this minutes. So in that rapid fire questions, a couple of more, and then Okay, and, and in the same vein as food, share food or don't share your food? I ain't don't share. share. I ain't no, share. Don't share. No, don't do that. Don't share. share. <laughs> no, no. What if I will okay, get her they don't play. food or food? Share. No. no. Mr. Woodson, you got you just got married. So I don't understand. I will get her her own plate. You'll get her her own plate. I'll oh. share. As long as it's not breakfast, I'll share. She's going to take it off my plate anyway, but that's a different story. So it's a share by default. And this is his beloved. He just got married, y'all. This is them on the honeymoon. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a gorgeous top she got there. She looked like, I got my man. He's like, yeah, that's mine right there. That's Just look at that. Look at that smile. You all should make sure you'll see their podcast. If it isn't love, make sure you're following him on Instagram. They are wonderful, funny, delightful um his TikTok, all of those things um in that there we go kra thinks she's tribe i love you but we, we, we come to you in a minute uh but she has come to the cavalcade of authors uh we've seen that in that on that note make sure you go to the website www.nalenakai.com get your free books from there also if you're listening to this as well as if you're in the chat if you email me at Nalena Kai. N-A-L-E-I-G-H-N-A-K-A-I.com. I will give you seven free books uh, from tribe members. Uh, well, actually it can go up to nine now because um, Stephanie has free content. Um, Daryl has some free content. Marie, you have some free content as well. 
Okay, so nine, seven, eight, no, 10. Seven, eight, that's three more people, seven plus three, 10. Okay, gotcha. All right, math is in my strong suit. So on that 10 free books that you will get when you email me and say, I was at the Great Midwest Book Fest, okay? I will make sure that you do that. Okay, and on that note, I am going to wrap it up. Who is the next person in? We're going to, everyone, unmic and say good night or good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And I'm going to bring evening, up Anthony. Also. Good afternoon. Thank you good so night, much for you. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you, you, Thank you Radia. Thank you, Radia. All right. We're Thank sliding you. it over. Everybody turn off your video and we are going to slide it back to Radia. Thank you. I would like to um, welcome Anthony Alston. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Tell us about your tell us about your book, Hidden. Um, well, first of all, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I really thank you for this opportunity. And I really enjoyed everything I just watched since I've signed on. Um, thanking God for uh, the tribe. You guys have given me some really good information. Um, I'm kind of new at this. I've got uh, four books that I had in the works. One of them is behind me that I finished, and that's Hidden. Hidden is um, a fiction novel, uh, sort of a love story mystery, kind of all mixed up together. So it's pretty interesting. Um, I've self-published this book. Um, I did this right before COVID hit, and I was looking forward to really take off, but I, um, so I'm just kind of catching up with my own inventory, you know. Okay. And how, um, how has your experience been as um, being an author so far? I love it. I, I love it. I can definitely identify with some things that some people had said before about knowing the characters and feeling the characters, controlling the characters and letting the characters talk to you because that happens with me a lot. Um, and then also when I'm writing these books, I, I almost see it in, in movie form. So I'm not only just writing a book just to say there's words on paper, but I look at it as a, like a screenplay or a movie, uh, like a movie um, project, so to speak. Okay. What is your overall writing process? Like, do you write every day or whenever you can? No, unfortunately, I still work a nine to five job. And um, I'm looking to retire soon. And I just feel like I can finish all four of the rest of these three books that I've got left once I do that. Um, but otherwise, um, I just, you know, just write when I can. Um, I, I like to write a lot at night. I like to write a lot by music. I like to write um, when I'm in a real calm place. Um, but my mental process is writing every day and it's writing during traffic. It's writing when I'm at work and it's writing when I'm around people. There's ideas that pop in my mind all the time. What have you learned um, so far as far as self-publishing your book? Like what is one of the biggest lessons that you've learned? Well, I, I being a novice at this, I've really learned that um, you can control a lot of what you do as opposed to putting it out there. I've heard so many horror stories from the uh, other conventional part of uh, publishing or getting it published by somebody else through an, another company. Um, but I, I think I've learned a lot. I, I had a, a person that I talked to out of Atlanta and they just kind of fed me some really good information. So I'm learning as I go, you know. Okay. Tell us a little bit. I know that you said that you were working on um, four other projects. Um, could you give us a snippet of some of them? Yeah. I, so I have this book hidden, but on the back of this book, I have three other projects. And those projects is um, <clears throat> one called Face Beams, uh, Dark Eyes, and another one that's a sequel to this book called Hidden Steel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what genres um, are those books? Uh, the other one, um, uh, these, the other ones are standalone. Well, the Facebook, uh, Face Beams and Dark Eyes are standalone books. The totally different characters that have nothing to do with the first book or the sequel. Um, and they're also fiction. They're also fiction like mysteries. 
the face being one is more more personable. You know, it's involving um, people. A, a person, my main character, is coming out of foster care, uh, but is becoming a hero in 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 the community. So, okay. And what inspired you to start writing? Well, um, I guess my my imagination early on as a child, you know, I, I I grew up in a dysfunctional home and I had to deal with a lot of things. And so my imagination was what really kept me going and kept me fueled, kept me sane and having opportunities in school early on um, and other opportunities in Milwaukee. I'm not only an I'm not only an author, but I'm also a musician, you know, and um, an artist. So I have a lot of um, imagination, a lot of creativity. So I guess you could probably say that. Okay. Now, as far as being, an art, what would you say is more, more difficult, um, being an artist or being a author? <laughs> oh, that's kind of hard. Uh, I think, um, I think they're both kind of equal. I probably would have to say being an author. Um, because um, there's a lot of challenges that do come, even, even me. Being uh, new at this, even me, I've had my challenges from people um, who really don't understand me, or don't understand my character, don't understand my book, you know, and uh, then having to deal with that. So I really appreciate, you know, some of the things that were said early on by uh, some of the other authors, because it really, um, really gave me some support really gave me an understanding. What's the best advice that you've gotten from an author? Ba basically, uh, again, just to repeat pretty much of what I heard today, just really standing on what you feel, being true to yourself and writing uh, for yourself and bringing it all out uh, as opposed to writing for other people. Okay. Do you have any favorite authors that you like to read when you get a chance to read? Uh, basically anybody, really. I just, I, when I get a chance to read, I, I like to write any, I mean, I like to read any, any, any book, actually. Okay. And so what do you like doing outside of reading? Uh, music is my thing. Um, I work a professional job here in Milwaukee, and, um, and I'm kind of in the community. But I would think uh, other, than, other than reading and other than writing, it's probably uh, art and music. Okay. Cooking. Someone, cooking, I like cooking as well. Oh, okay. Someone has a question. Uh, Tina Luck, that she has a question. Well, first she said, congratulations, Anthony, my Milwaukee friend, Bayview High School. I graduated from Bayview High School too. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. I'm a North Division Blue Devil. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I thought she, oh, I thought she meant, okay, my mistake. I thought she meant that she graduated from, um, from, um, that you graduated from Bayview. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. She, um, Tina also asked, um, is your, um, book on Amazon? No, I actually have my own inventory. I didn't, I hadn't put that one on uh, Amazon. I considered that with the, uh, the other three that I'm working on. Okay. But, not, I haven't decided that for sure. Okay, so where can so where can um where can we purchase your book from? Um, you can. I'd like to share my screen if possible. Is that um, possible? Is that possible? Or do, you, or do you have or do you have like a website? You can, you can, uh, you um, can go to echotreads.com. Okay, Echo spell Tread. that. Here, it's like this. Oh, okay. Okay, wait, hold on here. Okay, so what I'm doing here is, wait one second. I'm going to go ahead and type that in the chat here. Give me one second here. So it's echotreads.com, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you get it? Yep. Yep, okay. I got it. Okay. Okay, well, Anthony, I really appreciate I really appreciate you um, coming here today and everything. And then hopefully we are going, and of course, we're going to have this um, next year in person. Right, I was there three years ago and then 
COVID hit and that really, really knocked me out the box with it. Uh, that experience, I was able to attend a couple other ones, but not this one. So, but I, yeah. I enjoyed being here today. I enjoyed everything I heard and I appreciate all of you guys. Okay, well, we appreciate you being here and thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we have, okay, and so now we have um, Miss Brenda Jackson. Hi, Brenda, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so tell us about your latest release. Wow, my latest release is uh, this book here. It came out in April. It's for Harlequin Desire. And it's doing extremely well. I've just heard from the Harlequin people um, last week. It's a very readable vacation romance. And I think a lot of people um, enjoy reading what happens on vacation because it's vacation time. Now, next month, I have this book out, which is uh, The House on Blueberry Lane. So those are my two releases that I'm concentrating on now. Tell us a little bit about the house on Blueberry Lane. Oh gosh, I had so much fun writing that book because I love it when I'm reacquainted with old characters. And those that have kept up with my Steel series will remember Jay Colfax, because he's Mercury Steel best friend. And he was mentioned in a couple of my Steel books. And Velvet was also mentioned. They were mentioned as a couple in my very first Phoenix Steel book, Hidden Pleasures. Um, so everybody knew that from the beginning, Jay just would not say that he loved Velvet, that he thought it was just a entanglement a sexual entanglement, even though it lasted three years. So now Velvet left. She moved to Catalina Cole of all places. So we get to pick up what happened to them in Catalina Cole when he goes there with the intent of winning her heart. So it's one of those um, romances that doesn't have any mystery or anything like that. Any suspense is basically... A beautiful love story. Okay. And tell us about the, wait a minute. Okay. So the first one, the, <laughs> wait a minute, the one, not the, the other one that's out now. Um, okay. What happens on vacation? Yes. Now that's an extended family of the Westmorelands. That's the outlaws. And um, this book is about just outlaw. He's the senator and how he goes on vacation in Napa Valley. So again, I love when I reacquaint my readers with old characters. So in Napa Valley, they get reacquainted with Spencer Westmoreland. And Spencer book was one of the first Westmoreland books that I wrote. Um, it was, I think, like book number 10, maybe, maybe number eight. But anyway, um, so everybody get to see what has happened since with Spencer since that time. Not only do you read Jess's relationship or his love for Paige Novak, who's Pam's sister, Pam who married to Dylan Westmoreland, but you also get an update on what has happened with Spencer over the years. So I love to take my readers back to let them give them updates on what's happening with some of my readers favorites. So then that's what I did in that book. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the comments in the chat. Uh, Mama Tony said, Jess is the man. Um, <laughs> Renata Thompson, she said, yes, the outlaws. And um, someone else, Brown Book Series, she said, we love Brenda Jackson. So can you, and then, oh, Midnight Ace, she said, y'all get into the Catalina Cove series. <laughs> so where can we so where can readers find you on uh where can they find more information about you and your books 
Oh, gosh. My website, www.brendajackson.net. Um, I'm on Instagram, Brighter B. Jackson. I'm on Twitter, Author B. Jackson. Then I have a Facebook fan page, uh, Brenda Jackson Facebook fan page. And then I have my profile page and my website, which I just gave, you know, gave out the name. But um, they can find me almost anywhere. And I love hearing from my readers. So much is going on with me. A lot of my books will be made into movies. Um, you know, so I'm working on that. Already I got uh, the script to Dalton's book, which is Lover's Bow. I'm hoping they do film the two at the same time. That's why maybe I got both of them at the same time, the script. So when they go back to filming um, the book for Caton's uh, Man's Promise, I'm hoping while they have everybody on set, they will film Dalton because it's been a while. Brother's Honor was filmed and shown in 2019. So I'm hoping now that this is the year we go ahead and finish out the Grangers for Fashion Fit because I got so many others uh, books that I will be made into film by other companies as well. Okay. Well, Brenda, thank you so much for joining thank us for today. Having me. Thank you for having me. Well, you're welcome. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Same here. Thank you. Radio, while you take a break, um, we're sliding. Uh, thank you so much, Brenda. Really appreciate you coming. Uh, we have a tribe member who is from Holland. She did one most of those wonderful One Gotta Go, go graphics. Uh, mm -hmm. And Mary B. Morrison has been with us the entire time she's been listening in. So we're going to bring her on uh, to do a quick game of One Gotta Go with the people in the chat. So people feel free to take a break, get some water, take a potty break, whatever. But Radia, go ahead and take your break and I will play, have a little fun with Mary till you get back. Okay. And Soul Saray, uh, there she is. And she's from Holland. So it's way late over there right now. Uh, in that, let me get on the, on the video as well. So Soul Saray, do your quick intro, please. There you go. Hi, my name is Sol Sire A. Felida, and I'm the author of uh, Queen of Curacao. Um, <laughs> uh, I write romantic suspense novel, and I hope to one day be crowned the Queen of Whodunits. Queen you can of find me on social media on www.solsireafelida.com. Indeed. And you did these wonderful graphics. Mary, everyone knows who you are, but for people who are just tuning in, can you do a quick intro? We can't hear you. Yeah, I was like, let me come up off the mic. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Melena. I'm Mary Honeybee Morrison, New York Times bestselling author, playwright, and recently screenwriter with 30 books in print. I definitely believe in uplifting women. Female empowerment is my thing. I am a relationship sex expert, uh, a libido coach. If you've lost it, I can help you find it. So I do a lot of things nowadays, really. I think most of us as writers is we keep writing, we keep doing other things as well. So I'm all over social media at Celeb Honeybee. So please follow me. Thank you. Indeed. Make sure you drop uh, Salsa Ray and Mary. You can drop your link in the chat for everybody to know. But I'm going to go to the first card because we have a very short amount of time. Okay, Mary, these uh, graphics, the one gotta go graphics were done by Sosa Ray e. Felita. She lives in Holland. Uh, she was born in Curacao, that beautiful uh, island. And my son went there on his honeymoon. He said, I don't see why people wanna leave there uh, until he got to the prices, but just <laughs> anyway. So Mary, one gotta go, which one is it? And oh my God. Put your answer in the chat. Which one of these movies? Oh, wait, put it in the chat? Okay. No, no, you tell us, but the oh, people for the other chat. people put it in the chat. Oh, okay. Um, look, oh my gosh. I never saw motives. And just based on that, I have to choose that one. Okay. So Saray, which one has to go? Motives. I haven't seen it either. Motives. 
Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Oh, it thanks, okay. also, right? <laughs> what, is, what are the people in the chat saying? <laughs> uh motives. Motives. everybody said motives okay okay let's do another merry one addictive okay. addictive was by Zane. yeah um let's go to this one which one gotta go okay so sorry baby doll body stocking bustier or garter bell bustier what oh bustier. No. no mary which one gotta go <laughs> Well, so sorry, I am the bustier queen. I have a collection. <laughs> I'm definitely not getting rid of those. I'm going to say the body stocking is just way too much material. I just can't. I can see that, especially when it's time to go potty. I mean, that's work. Well, yeah, that and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last one for Mary. This is, what are the people in the chat saying? They, oh, somebody said baby doll. What do you guys say? Body stocking. Oh my God, not motives. Body they stuff. have a motives movie? I yeah, love they the do. Baby doll. Oh, I like the baby doll. It's kind of comfortable. Okay, here yeah, we go. One, I kiss, think so. one gotta go. Lip biting kiss, French kiss, forehead kiss, or earlobe kiss. Mary, which one gotta go? Okay, this one is going to be really easy for me. Lip biting kiss. I do not get pleasure out of having anybody bite my lip. No, thank you. <laughs> okay, I, I can see that. I can see Sosa Ray. Um, none. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, we can tell what she writes. We can tell what she writes. Okay, yes. okay. So we're going to go to a Sosa Ray card to see. Oh, this is going to be difficult. What did the people in the chat say? Ear biting, lip biting, lip biting. Nobody likes the biting kisses. I guess me and you, Sosa Ray, we kind of we kind of different. I, I feel you. I feel you. Here we go. We're gonna do this one. One gotta go. Uh, Mary, which one? Okay. Oh, that's hard because we do a big thing now with Christmas and the PJs and all of that. I am going to go for Thanksgiving. What? Yeah, yeah, because I eat way too much. So. <laughs> I know that's why I chose to keep it because of all the good food. Oh my God. And if you all go to the website, um, the www.nelanakai.com website, we have some great Thanksgiving recipes. It's a free cookbook on that page. On the first page, you scroll down and you'll see three offerings of free books. So one of them is, two of them are cookbooks. So in that, which one got to go, Soul Saray? Thanksgiving. What? We don't celebrate that year. Ah, we don't celebrate okay. that year. Gotcha. And you're in Holland, right? Yes. Okay. I don't know if you two are both Bridgerton fans, but let's check it out. But I know the people in the chat are. So which character has to go? Simon, Daphne, Anthony, or Kate? Mary, did you watch Bridgerton? I did watch Bridgerton. I did. Oh boy, this is hard. Not hard for me. I'm going to say Kate. What? Okay. <laughs> why Kate? I don't know. It's hard for me to get rid of a man. I don't know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be Daphne. Really? I love Daphne. Oh gosh. Uh, I didn't like what she did to him. I, if, you know, if it had oh, been no, not to a that, woman, but, yeah. it would have been, yeah, I kind of, she was whiny. Eh, get out of here. Anyway, <laughs> um, on that note, uh, what do the people in the chat say? Did you watch Bridgerton, Soul Saray? Yes. So which character? Uh, for me, it's Daphne as well. See, Daphne. she agrees with me, Mary. What do the people in the chat say? They probably say the same thing, Daphne. I don't know. Ooh, let's see what movies. Daphne. Oh, Daphne. Daphne. Okay. Simon. No. No, not Simon. Oh, my God. That man. Ooh, the sex scenes in that movie. I was like, man, they was kind of tame this season. The first season, that was like borderline porn. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, Mary, which movie got to go? Let me see. Okay. Grease. Ah, oh, okay, okay. What? Put your answers in the chat, y'all. Let us know which movies gotta go. So, Saray, which movies gotta go? 
It's a hard one, but I have to go with Purple Rain. What? Prince. No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Which one? Prince. Purple Rain. Um, I think um, I'll say Greece. Uh, I can, now I can see Greece before I see Purple Rain. So, Saray, you and I got to have a talk. That's just that's Sorry. just not that's not that's just not right. So also just to let everybody know in the chat we have the Cavalcade of Authors Book Club Summit in October. The free registration is in the link and if you're listening and you can't get to me, you can DM me on Facebook, DM me on Instagram and you can get your free registration link for the Book Club Summit. Celeb Honeybee is going to be there, Florenza, um uh, also Stephanie, Sosare, myself, you a lot of tribe members UM Hiram, um, Karen Bradley, we will all be there for this book club summit. If you're in a book club, bring your members, come on, have a great time. So on that, I did drop the link in the chat. Make sure you register today. On that note, thank you for playing along, Sosa Ray and Mary. And we're going to bring up the next yeah. person that is in, and that's Michelle Lindo Rice. She also came to the Cavalcade of Authors, wonderful person. And I'm going to be out of here. Mary, thank you so much. We're going off screen for a minute. I know you're listening in the background, but here we go. Stop video. There we go. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, thanks so much for having me. So tell us about your book that you have out now. Okay, so I actually have my first book coming out with um, Harlequin Special Edition, and you can see the picture behind me, Rivals at Love Creek, and that comes out in like a week or two, June 28, 2022. It's coming, and it's the first in a series, so it's the, the next book it comes out in August, which is, look at that gorgeous book cover. Can you see it behind me? Cinderella's <laughs> Last Stand is just a stunning cover, and um, it's a part of the Seven Brides for Seven Brothers series. I grew up, uh, you know, watching that show. I really love that movie, and so, um, you know, I was glad for the chance to be able to write these books. <laughs> Good, good. Now, I know that you write in several genres. Do you have a favorite genre that you like to write in? Um, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think because I, I tend to write um, a lot of characters who have something that they have to overcome. And so I think that that's a probably a common theme throughout my books. So I think that that's kind of where I, you know, I like I like that whole redemption piece. So um, I just, like every other author, you know, our characters have to have something that they have to overcome, but I just love that piece of it. So that's kind of the theme that I try to, um, I try to bring through all, all my books, but I will say this, that these books are definitely a lot of fun. I get to, um, be a little more free. I think I have a, a little more ch a chance to spread my wings and not as boxed in. So I get a chance to, you know, hopefully I thought I was a little funny, but we'll see if my readers think that they see some funny parts in there as well. <laughs> Give us a little taste of each of the books, each of those books that are behind you. Okay, so Rivals at Love Creek, as the title suggests, it's about, um, you know, it's it, it, first of all, it's a small town series, a made up town of Love Creek, Florida. You know, I lived in Florida for quite a few years. And so, you know, I wanted to um, showcase that small town life. And so um, it, it, this, the brothers are actually a part of a blended family. So you have um, two white brothers that were adopted and the rest are uh, five, the, the other five are black brothers. So that's why you'll see where one brother Axel is um, is black and Lynx is white here on the screen. So, um, so we have Shanna who once dated Lynx for a short time and then a scandal comes in and um, he's basically the person that she's made to work with as a as a principal. I, uh, being an educator for all the years, I wanted to also bring in some books where we kind of look at the educator's life. So they're both high school principals as well. So that's a little bit about Rivals at Love Creek. And then we have Cinderella's Last Stand where 
you know, I love, who, who doesn't love reading about uh, celebrities? So we have Axel, who is this movie star, a little bit full of himself. And then you have Maddie is his assistant. And so they are, um, you know, this is where she gives her two weeks notice. And so um, the rest of the story then picks up from there when she does that. So, yeah. so are you working on, I know you have two, so you have, um, so we already know that you have another book that's coming up. Are you working on anything currently that you can let us know about? I am um, about to be working on something, but I can't announce anything yet. Hopefully that will be able to be announced really soon. I'm super excited about that opportunity. Um, but again, I can't say anything about that yet. I, um, as many people know, I started writing as well as Zoe Marie Jackson. So um, Zoe had has a book coming out in October as well, um, which is the Christmas switch. And that comes out um, October 25th to be exact. So, you know, um, I'm super excited at just being given that this opportunity. So where I am right now is I think a lot of authors would know this part of the world, which is, you know, book proposal. Um, want to get the rest of those seven brides for seven brothers story told so that's kind of what I've been prepping right now <laughs> tell us a little bit about the Zoe book that's coming in October oh really okay I'm um, sure um it's it's the Christmas switch and um it is actually uh based here in Delaware where I now live and it's it's I actually wrote that book when I was going through a lot still kind of going through some stuff um, and it was just um, really inspirational for me, really emotional for me. And I'm hoping that my readers will also see that in that story where both characters were, you know, faced with such pain and um, overcoming. It features, you know, a, a twin who switched places and uh, falls in love with the neighbor next door who her sister warns her not to get involved with. So that's about, uh, that's Chanel and Ryder's story that's coming in the Christmas switch. What would you say is the best thing that you like as far as being an author? I think the best thing that I do like is interacting with the readers. I'm telling you, I have been blessed. And I think most of us here share the same readers with some just amazing readers who are like, you know, I'm going to be reading your book and just really support you. There have been times where I, I have been where I was saying, I don't know if I'm going to continue writing anymore. And readers are just like, no, keep going. So I think that that's my favorite part is networking and um, with fellow authors, but definitely interacting with readers. That's absolutely my favorite thing to do. I have a um, looking at the chat here. I have a comment uh, from Shannon Harper. She says she can't. Yes. Can't wait to read this series. <laughs> yes, I, I, I mean I'm Shannon is one of those readers that I think every author knows. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I was gonna say. That's why I was just gonna say just Shannon. But I know that you probably yeah. well, you probably knew her. Uh, what um what advice would you give um to a to to someone who wants to be a writer? I always give this advice and I, I mean, I'm, you probably would get it on repeat over and over, but definitely to read, 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 read a lot, especially in the genre that you want to write. Please read a lot. It, it's very surprising how many authors will say, I don't have time to read or I don't read. And so just remember that just as how you're going to want people to read your book, support our fellow authors. And also reading is fuel for an author. I believe that, um, you know, it gives you inspiration. It keep, helps you keep, keep up with the trends, what's hot. You know, um, of course, I'm sure like many on the line, I've read a lot of Brenda Jackson's book. Um, I, I've read What Happens on Vacation. I've read, you know, a lot of her books. So, you know, like I said, um, that's my biggest advice is to read, read, read. It keeps you going, keeps you energized. It's your fuel. And, um, and you get ideas as well, I think. And in the chat, Mama Tony said, I can't wait to spotlight your books on Book of the Day. Oh, I'm sure you know who oh it is. Good. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, have you, do you find it um, difficult to, um, do you find it difficult to um, switch between genres when you're writing? 
No, because, um, you know, I still, I, I would say they're pretty much still um, sweet. It's just uh, these with spe special edition is just a little bit more on the spicier side. Not too much spicy because I realize I will have some crossover with my readers. So I didn't want to, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I think it should be okay. Um, I, I, I think that they'll see some similarities is just that Wait, you're breaking up just more free, freedom. Oh. Wait, Michelle, can you re can you repeat that? You are breaking up just a little bit. Oh no, I'm so sorry. We're in the middle of a power outage here, so I wonder if that's oh. what's interfering with it. So okay. I'm I'm like uh, I guess hot 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 link hot, uh, hot spotting yeah. into my cell phone. So I hope that that's not what's causing the issue, but. I was um, I was saying that it, I, I, it's a little um, it's pretty much you know um, in common with what I've written before I believe. Oh, Hopefully okay. you're hearing me. Yeah, I can hear you. I hope I you're hearing hear me. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then um, um, one of our authors, um, K. R. Ray, she said, "Totally agree. You do have to read and support." Oh yes, definitely. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, what, what would you say, where could, where can readers find you? Um, well, like everyone, if you Google me, you can find me very, very easily. Um, type in Michelle Lindo Rice, you know, Michelle Lindo Rice. I'm on, I have my website. I urge you, please join my mailing list. I am on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. You know, I'm trying to get out there. Um, and uh, so you can easily find me. And of course, I also have an author page on Facebook as well. So I try to um, keep everything running as, you know, much as I can. <laughs> Do you have, um, as far as like social media and everything, do you, um, do you find it difficult as far as the marketing um, now that social media is so, you know, prevalent now from the time that you started writing? I am, I think that with all the algorithms and everything that's in place, it's probably a little bit more uh, difficult, but I think uh, some authors do really well. Um, you interview a few of them who are like, superb at that um for me personally i say i'm still on the learning side still trucking along and that's also why i'm really grateful for readers because readers definitely um help to um sell sell your work as well by word of mouth and also by leaving reviews reviews are really important for authors because it does help other um, readers decide as well as new readers decide whether or not they want to pick up your work and it also helps with you know certain algorithms with Amazon and Goodreads etc to get your work out there as well so yeah okay who are some of your favorite authors if you oh can my them. you're gonna get me in trouble because I hope <laughs> I don't forget some names but, you know, Victoria Christopher Murray, um, Rashonda Tate Billingsley, Rhonda McKnight, Vanessa Riley, absolutely love her work. Um, Piper Hewley, uh, Vanessa Miller, I enjoy her books as well. She, we're actually critique partners. Um, oh boy, I know a lot more authors. Oh, Kimberla Lawson Roby. Um, I've read almost everyone on this line, I believe as well. You know, I try to at least read one book of everyone when I come across them. So, um, but th those are among my faves. Um, of course, Sandra Brown from way back in the days, one of my favorite romance writers as well. And of course I've read, like I said, Brenda Jackson. I mean, so many, I hope I did not forget any of the names there, but those are some of the few and i also love marie benedict's books i've read hers as well I, I read an eclectic you know i read historical fiction i read um some suspense i'll read romance you know i read anything that really captures me okay well michelle and Sadika I... johnson her book the yellow wife was amazing yeah i heard that book is amazing every time mm -hmm. someone reads it they said that book is so amazing yeah 
It's a gritty yeah. book, but you know, it's a really Mm-hmm. Okay, well, Michelle, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I appreciate the chance to come and chat it up with you and to, you know, say hi to some of the readers. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. You have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Okay, so now we have... Um, we have LaShonda Hoffman. Hey, LaShonda. Wait, unmute. I'm on hey, mute. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello. So go ahead and tell us about Love in Space. Oh, wow. You know the title. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> um, I started my Kinder Vela journey last, last year doing a, um, a book about book promotion, building your readership. And um, my bet, my writing bestie, uh, Paulette Nunley, teased me about um, when are you going to write this fiction book you've been talking about for years and years and years. And so I said, you know what, this is the year I'm going to try my hand at romance because that was my passion, romance. And um, I put it out there. We did it the weekend of Valentine, put it out there. And my worst fear was that nobody would read it and people are reading it. And so it's been a real Great fun doing it. I wrote a middle grade book that I'm working on. Um, it's about uh, two twins who find out that they're half alien when they move to a new planet. So they moved to a new planet called Papyria. And um, so I said, you know what, 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 why would the parents move to Papyria? And that's the basis of Love and Space, uh, the, pa- the parents and their children moving to Papyria. So we have 500 people who are not married and they have to be married before they move to Papyria because the way it's set up is only set up for families and so are married people. And so the stories are about these people and their dating and who they find, uh, can they find love before they make it to Papyria. And so the first, the first uh, series is about four singles. Um, the computer picks out four, four spouses for them and they have they have to date them for a whole year to get to the before they get to the planet. So some of them are having good dates. Some people are having bad dates. Some people are, uh, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> so that's what the story is. It's like for me, it's my soap opera. I've always wanted to write a soap opera or work on a soap opera. So this is my soap opera. I get to put in the the conflict, the craziness, the drama and everything. And so it's uh, two, two males and two females and they are on this dating thing, trying to find love, Just but they're on a spaceship. So that's the difference. <laughs> and um, they have to, you know, have to make the decision if this is the person for them, because if it's not, then they have to go back to the uh, space station. They don't get to go to Papyrian and live. So it's, it's a hard decision because you're making this decision to, this is the person you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. And so, it's a little, it's a, it's almost like um, the reality shows where you see people trying to find their spouses and get married and all the craziness. You know, most of the people, when they don't make their spouse, they just go back home or they, they can't go back to earth. They have to go and live on a space station, which is not all that great. So they're trying to find their soulmates. Now, what, what inspired, well, before we get to this, um, for people who don't know, in, um, tell them about what Kindle Vela is. Oh, okay. Well, Kindle Vela is a, um, a new platform for Amazon, but episodic books have been around for centuries. Some of the, some of the original writers, um, classic writers wrote um, their, their books in episodic. They would put pieces of it in newspapers or magazines. And so Amazon decided last year that they wanted to try it out um, to see if they could get an audience for it. And so they invited authors that were used, probably doing Kindle Unlimited to be on there. And so they were like the first ones to get on the platform. And my, my mentor is Sylvia Hubbard. Sylvia has been doing eBooks for millions of years. <laughs> She's fantastic mm-hmm. at it. And so she got on the platform when it first started. And I think they started in June. They came out in June. I got on the platform in July. So she told me, she said, well, if you don't want to write uh, fiction yet, you're not ready for fiction. She said, you need to continue writing about book promotion because that's what I write about. If you can see behind me, building online relationship was my first book that I published. And so I said, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna get on there because you only had to write 10 chapters. 
So if you could write 10 chapters, which they call episodes on, on the platform. And so I was like, okay, cool. Um, and, and, and the first time I put it on there, it, it, was, a, it was a process because um, I found out that readers don't like episodic books. They was like, uh-uh, no, <laughs> we ain't coming over there. It's a new platform. You know how we are. We don't want to try nothing new, uh-uh, the new thing. Then you telling me I got to buy tokens too? Oh, uh, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. So that really put me on the fence on putting up a fiction book up there because I was having such a hard time getting the, the writers to come over there and check out the book. And so I said, okay, okay. So I went and did more research. And so Amazon, um, episodic books, have, like I said, have been around for centuries. So it's not a new platform, but one of the biggest platform is Radish and they have a uh, romance and they do all kinds of romance. So they are very popular readers who know about Radish been on there for years, they've been following. And so I think Amazon was trying to get a little cut of that, trying to see if they can pull some of them people over there. And uh, it's, it's been a slow process, but the people are coming. What I've, what I've learned is that, like I said, it's like a soap opera. If you look at a soap opera, soap operas always have, they have lots of conflict. They have um, cliffhangers at the end. So, you know, you're coming back, oh my God, what happened to Bo and Hope? Are they going to get together? And you're back the next day trying to see. And so that's how episodic is. A lot of people came on and thought that they could just drop a book into it. And it's not like that. It's not a, it's not per se, it's, there's a different type of book for episodic books. And so if you're coming to just drop your book in there thinking, you go, oh, I'm put chapter one, chapter two, it's not going to work because you want to intrigue those readers where they're like, okay, let me spend my 20 coins to see what's happening next. What's going to happen next? And if your book doesn't leave them at the end like that, they're not gonna, they're not gonna continue the story. And so it's, it's, it's all about cliffhangers. It's all about uh, being consistent. And so that's what it taught me was that I wasn't a writer who wrote every day. So I had to learn how to be consistent with at least saying, okay, I'm gonna put up a story every week. You know, and so my readers, when they looking for it, because my, my daughter was following me and she was like, Mama, what, what happened to your story? I'm reading it. What happened? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, we were having issues with Amazon because Amazon had got a lot of people at one time and they were putting all these stories up. So when you posted your story, you're telling people it's going to be on Friday and it didn't go up Friday because it was it was just everybody was backlogged. Now it's back to back to normal. So you tell a reader, okay, come back Friday. So you can, you know, you like you're watching my favorite show is This Is Us. It's on Tuesday. I know every Tuesday I better be there at eight o'clock to watch it. And so it's the same way with write, reading these type of stories is that your, your audience already knows that if you're going to put out a, a story once a week or you're going to put out twice a week, they know when to come. They know that, um, that it's going to either be a, um, 600 words to 2,000 words. You know, um, and that is that you're writing this as you go. I think a lot of people have uh, issues with it because they're like, well, it's not heavily edited. Well, it's writing as you go. And so you're doing, most of the, the people on this platform are editing their own story. So this story is just like the first draft. You're getting the first draft of somebody's story. Now, if you don't want that, then you wait till it comes out to the book, book form. But some readers just got to know what the writers is doing, how it's going, what, who these characters are. They want to be part of the story process. And this is how uh, Kindavella is. It's all about being as part of the story process. When I started my first book, Building, on, Building Your Readership, I honestly just thought I was going to do my 10 episodes and be done. And then I start getting emails from people going, can you talk about this? Can you talk about that? And I was like, wow, before I knew it, I'm on my, I'm on my third book in that series. You know, and so it's, it's always it's a continuing story. So if you like binging movies or binging books, this platform is great for you. If you like to just take a little bit, read like on, I love to read on when I'm at lunch. And so I don't have that much time, but I want to be able to do something real good and then not be caught in the middle of a chapter. You read that little episode and then you could come back the next day and read something else, you know, and so it's, it's, it's different. I always tell people to try it out because we all were against ebooks when they first came out. Uh, still a lot of people that are against audiobooks. They, they, they ain't reading, you know. And so it's a new platform, but there are so many amazing stories on here that you have to try that you, you know, I, I put my book on there because I wanted to uh, get out of my fear of writing a romance and I wanted to uh, start building a readership and, and, it's, and it's happening. I'm building a readership. People are asking about the story. They want to know about the characters. And it's, it's amazing for me. I have just had a great time with it.
what would you say is one thing that a new author needs to do besides promotion? I know you have a lot, but what is your biggest number one thing? My number one thing, and you probably know this one too, is the email. You know, I tell you, start that email list. Start the email list no matter what. If you don't get a website, start the email list and get your landing page to start grabbing readers. When I, I, as you know, I, I have a book out. I have books out, but they were about promotion. And I had an email list. But my email list, I was able to find out that this, that the Kim Devella wasn't for my email list. So I had to start from scratch all over again, starting a new session in my email list of people who want to hear about Ken Devella and, and starting that way. Now, a lot of people, they come on, they got this email list and they think all these people want to come with them. That's what you have to learn. Your email list tells you that. Will your readers come with you when you try something new or will they be like, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> Tell me when you got the book out. But if I didn't have an email list, I would have been starting completely from scratch with nothing, you know, and that's hard as an author to start with nothing. You put a book out there and you have nothing. Nobody knows about you. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody is willing to try you, you know. So if you start your email list, you start when you start writing it. You just say, hey, I'm starting a, a new book. I want you guys to be on a journey with me, you know, and you put that information out there, let them know. People knew that I was starting this journey, that it was going to be out there, that I was doing something different, that I was finally putting my romance book out here. So um, yeah. somebody saying, what email server to use? Um, well, that's a good question. But I, what I tell my clients all the time is it's all about your budget. What is your budget? If you have a, a no budget, then you might want to look at the servers that are free for now until you build it up and then you can go into paying for them. I always say if you're going to do free, you want to make sure that it can advance with you because there's nothing like getting on a, a platform, building people up to a thousand people, and then it tells you that's all you can get and you can't, and it's hard to move. It is so hard to move your email list to another list because you have to get all those people to agree to move with you. It used to be you could just take your list and drop it down into another platform, but you can't. So I always tell my clients, make sure that your email list can grow with you because if it doesn't and you have to move it over, I moved from constant contact to Kartra and it was like pulling teeth to get those people to say, yes, I want to move with you because Kartra was like, nope, they can't come on your list unless they, unless they opt in. It's an opt in system now. So be very careful about that. If you got a lot of people and you want to put them on your email list, send them an invite. Do not put them on your email list because you can get kicked off the email system that way too. Okay. Now, LaShonda, where can people find you? And drop your information in the chat. Oh, okay. I will. Um, LaShondaHoffman.com is my website. And then you can find me on all the platforms. I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on um, Twitter. I'm loving TikToks. I heard somebody say they wasn't on TikTok. Get on TikTok. The book club, book readers are there. Uh, I am, my favorite uh, platform right now is Clubhouse. I love social audio. So if you have not tried Clubhouse, check out a Clubhouse. There is definitely a literary um, market there. Go in there, check out things. I host a room in there uh, three times a week. Mondays is we talk about TV and shows. On Tuesdays, we talk about book promotion. And then Wednesdays, we talk about uh, Ken Devella. So definitely come visit me in Clubhouse. All right. Well, LaShonda, thank you so much for, for coming today. Thank you so much for having me. And one day I'm going to meet you in person at the place. I'm just, that's all I want now. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. And now we have um, Betty Schmoot Madison. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. This is my first time uh, at the Midwest uh, Book Fest. So Happy to be yes. here among such great authors. This is awesome. Yes, yes. So tell us about your latest book. Sure. So again, I'm Betty Smoot Madison. Um, I am what I call a, a self-proclaimed positive pusher. Um, I'm the author of the three pillars, faith, wisdom, and leadership, which reached number seven um, the first week that it was released in the Christian business and professional growth category. Um, I was two books behind John Maxwell's uh, The Self-Aware Leader. 
Um, so I was super proud of that. And, and this is a spiritual guide and journal for women who are ready to soar. Um, really in this book, I, um, you know, again, the, the name of it is the three pillars. And I consider the pillars of my life to be faith, wisdom, and leadership. Um, and as mentioned, it is a spiritual faith-based guide um, and journal for women. And so not only is it a little bit of my own personal um, journey and story about overcoming uh, with a bit about just struggling as a young mom, I was 17 when I got pregnant with my daughter, um, 18 when I gave birth to, her, birth to her. So I literally went from high school into college and started my first sem semester of college with the baby bump. And so of course there were struggles that came with that, right? Both emotionally and financially. Um, spiritually and even even mentally, if 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 I'm honest, and so there are just um, stories in there about my personal journey and growing through being a mom as a teen and growing through my 20s. Um, I also lost my fiance tragically in my early 20s to a motorcycle accident, um, and so this book really is about overcoming and growing through life's challenges and being able to keep going no matter what life throws at you because life is gonna throw all kinds of things, right? That you're, you're never really gonna be prepared for, but it's really about how you overcome them, how you get through them. And so um, within this book, um, I talk about that. I also talk about leadership and professional growth and, and what it takes to kind of break through um, those ceilings that exist in, within almost any industry. Um, I've worked in government for nearly 20 years um, now, and I've grown quickly in an industry that was um, predominantly white male dominated. Um, and so I, I provide strategies for breaking through those prof professional ceilings. Um, but you'll notice in, in the subtitle, which I, I state again, that it is, it is a spiritual guy, right? So the book is framed around the three pillars, the faith, wisdom, and leadership. Um, and within those pillars, there are a number of pillar principles. Um, which each has tips for personal and professional growth and development. Um, it also has Bible-based scriptures for each of those, um, uplifting prayers, also declarations, I believe in speaking life over yourself every single day um, so that you can really start to see the life that you want to have and start living the life that you want to have. And I believe that all of that is in the power of the tongue, right? So be, I have declarations that you can speak over your life every single day. Um, within there. And then of course, because I am such a journal addict, I love journals. I love being able to write down what's on my mind. I have journal pages built into um, the book itself. After each pillar principle, there's uh, pages that you can journal. Um, I have prompting questions, just questions to just, you know, get you thinking about what you've read, the scriptures that are in there, the prayers, the declarations, and, and the tips, the, the professional and personal growth tips that are there. Um, and there's journal pages to help you through that. So I feel like it, it is jam packed with a lot of goodness. <laughs> so what have you, what have you learned um, being in the literary industry so far? That is not easy. <laughs> I think I've heard almost every author that has been on so far. I've heard, heard them say that in some sort of way, um, whether it's, whether you're writing nonfiction or fiction, I, I feel like um, a lot of times you do go into being, you know, uh, into the, your writing and author journey thinking, okay, I can release a book. Hopefully everyone in the world will support it um, and everyone will buy it. And you quickly learn that it's, it's not just that easy, right? You don't just, don't just drop it into the atmosphere. There, there's a lot of work that comes with it. Um, and so I think just doing your research ahead of time, I found that that really helped me. Um, I did not self-publish. I did go with a publisher this time, but before I took the publishing journey, I, I just, I read a lot. Um, I read a lot about the, the, the publishing process. Um, I did a lot of research, listened to a lot of content that was out there. And really when I, once I got with my publisher, I had already done a lot of the steps that were needed um, or that your publisher would take you through. Um, and so I, I would say, just do a lot of research um, ahead of time before you make either decision. I, I, I think either is fine, whether you publish or uh, work with a publisher or self-publish. Um, there's pros and cons to either. Um, and so I would just do your research. And I, again, I think, you know, the marketing is a big part of it that never ends. Um, I constantly say that, you know, I want a book that, you know, this book was written with me and God. I prayed a lot as I wrote it. 
Um, and I believe that it is intended to reach nations. Um, but I, I think once I released that book within a month, I thought it was going to reach the nations within a month, right? <laughs> and I had to really um, have a, a come to Jesus talk, I guess you could say with myself and just say, you know, you don't reach nations in a month, right? It, it takes years to do that. Um, and it takes years to build a legacy. So I had to give myself patience. I had to give myself some grace um, and really just understand that I have to keep working at this for years to come. Um, and so that's that would be the lesson that I would share with anyone else. You know how some people say, well, I'm living my best life. Um, what would that mean to you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, living my best life would be um, having peace of mind every single day. I, um, I believe that wisdom is a big part of um, your daily living, which is why wisdom is a part of this book. Um, I believe that just being intentional and work in, in uh, setting time aside to talk with God and getting wisdom for your day is a great way to um, have less hiccups. <laughs> um, and, and when those hiccups come, you know how to navigate them. I truly believe that we could be equipped mentally and spiritually to navigate any obstacle that comes our way. So um, I, I think just really tapping into wisdom every single day, having peace of mind, being able to go to sleep every day with, um, with just peace of mind. Um, and I just, I'm fresh off of vacation, just came back from vacation yesterday. So living my best life would be able to go on vacation, um, you know, as often as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, just making, you know, my family being happy, everyone healthy and whole. How do you, do you find it difficult to balance your nine to five life and your author life? And how do you do that? I'm still learning. I'm still learning that. It has been, um, it's tough because my nine to five is very demanding. Um, and I, I'm in an executive leadership role in government. And so it's hard to do both. Oftentimes I feel um, that I don't have the, the wind and the sail <laughs> to, to do both, to, to get off of the, the nine to five and then do you know work on the, on the book or promoting the book. Um, but I really just have to, to, to push through and keep going. Um, I'm finding that time management is just as critical as, you know, as I manage time personally, I also have to do that with juggling the nine to five and the book. Um, and so I, I just, I really feel like keeping a calendar, um, I'm a, as I mentioned, journals and planners, like I, I've always had those and those have always been a big part of my life. So I just um, really just like schedule and write everything down, keep things on a calendar. We have a family calendar, being able to manage that with my, my, my husband and our kids and what they have going on. So um, time management is a big part of that. But, um, but yeah, I'm still learning how to, to really have energy for, for both. Um, and I, I feel like I'll master that soon enough, but I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> it's been hard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And Betty, who, where can we find you? So I am also on almost every uh, social media platform. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok, um, LinkedIn also, but I am most active really uh, of all of those. Um, Instagram is my favorite. I post the most there. Um, so you can follow me at be inspired underscore by birthmark. Um, birthmark drop is the, in, yeah, drop that in the chat. Yes, I'll drop that in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Birthmark is um, my company that I um, aim to just release a lot of motivational and positive inspirational products. Um, if you go to my website, www.faithwisdomleadership.com, you'll get a little bit of uh, a taste of what Birthmark is and the faith-based products or inspirational products that I also offer. In addition to the book, um, I have a um, set of declaration cards, what I call I Inspire cards um, that you can use every single day. And just again, read those declarations to speak over your life. I also offer an Inspire box that has um, a bunch of goodies there as well. So 
um, yeah, at my website, I also have a email subscription list. If you, um, I love sending just positive messages to my email list. So you can join um, my, my list through my website. Um, but yeah, I would say go to Instagram. That's, that's where I post the most. Okay. All righty. Well, Betty, it was so good to meet you today. Yes. And yes, and thank, thank you so you. much. Oh, well, you're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you for and thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. I've been enjoying it all. Thanks, everyone. Well, you're welcome. And don't forget to um to um drop everything drop in the in chat. chat. Oh, okay. okay I see. I'll do that now. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay, yeah, so yeah. okay. Okay, so right now we have um Marion Hill. Hi, Marion. Oh, you're on, you're on mute. Is that better? Yep, that's better. How are you? I am well. I've been running a lot of errands today, so, but I'm good. I'm good. That's good. Um, tell us about your latest book. My latest book is called Cisco's Dance, and it's the fourth book in my fiction series set in the fictional world of Cambia. And it's a story of two dancers, married couples, Cisco and Letitia, and they perform a traditional dance called Guanamama. It's based off an Afro-Latino dance. And the city that they're in is starting to move towards a newer type of dance called Picanta. And so it's just a story of uh, Cisco and Letitia trying to hold up to the traditional dance and hold up traditional values. And I've always been fascinated between what's tradition and what's new and that tension between those two. And this is just their journey, telling their story about how they were able to maintain the traditional dance and that culture in there as well. What inspired you to write this story? You know, cause you said that, you know, it's a fictional place and everything. What inspired you to do that? Well, I've been a science fiction and fantasy reader probably since nine, 10 years old. So I've been, and I've been always creating my own worlds and that type of thing. And so, um, and basically I create this fictional world of Cambria about 10 years ago and I've just been writing stories in it. And in this story of this married couple and these dancers came together and I thought it would be a unique way because in fantasy, there's not a lot of stories about dance and music. And so I thought it would be a unique, unique way to tell the story in a fictional world like that. OK. And so have you always wanted to write science fiction? Yes, I have. I have. I've always been drawn to it. I've been reading it, you know, like I said, since I was a kid. Um, you know, I've done, I was an English major in college. Um, I've just, it's always been drawn towards that. So it's definitely been a passion and love for mine for a very long time. Okay. And what start and what inspired you to start writing like your I know this is your fourth book in the series, but what started you um, on your writing journey? Well, I've always kind of been my own doing stuff on my own and doing it for myself. And then obviously, the indie publishing came in, you know, late 2008, 2009, 2010. And I saw that this was an avenue to be able to publish my own works. And so I just figured, you might as well do it. I mean, you can talk about doing it, you can say you're going to do it. And a lot of people have a story in them and I just decided and obviously it's been you know almost 10 years now doing this and it's been a lot of headaches and bumps along the way but it's just something I've always done and I just figured let's just get it out here and, and that's surprisingly over the years reception has gotten better so just showing me that if you really truly do something you can keep pursuing it people will respond to it sure sure and um what would you say is the um as far as science fiction as far as being a um African American science fiction author. Um, do you find do you find that science fiction is more acceptable to us now than it was before? Yes, I mean obviously you have people like N.K. Jemison, you have Nalo Hopkins, and obviously I told you Octavia Butler was the queen. You know, you know obviously she's not here anymore. But as of now, in the probably the last ten or fifteen years, it has been more accepted. Not, not only African Americans, Latinos, Native Americans, so. The feel is broadening. Yes, there's still challenges, but we all have stories and imagine stories about our future, regardless of what your ethnic background is. And I think now readers are ready for that and hungry for that. And they just want more stories beyond the traditional, you know, European centric fantasy. So I think, like I say, in the last decade, it's really the field has opened up. There's still ways to go, but it's definitely opened up, you know, for quite a bit. And so how is your, um experience been in the um, literary industry over the years? Like what changes have you seen? 
Well, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, I published my first book, DeAndre's Discovery, in 2014. And, you know, there's been a lot of changes. I mean, there's, you know, people can basically write a book and post it up on Amazon now. So there's a lot more access, which is good, which is good. Everybody, I believe, has a story and want to be able to publish it. But now it's just learning about the marketing and how to manage it, how to manage social media. And your last guest, Betty, was talking about how to manage that work-life balance. So really more than anything for me, it's really been about that, making sure you put, get the words down, you finish, you start a book, you finish it. So it's really trying to be more my own pace than just more about what's the industry because the industry is gonna change, strategies are gonna change, people are gonna try this, people are gonna try that, but it's still, all that matters really is about, you know, putting the books out, getting them out to readers and trying to connect with them as best, as best you can. Okay. And what would you say is your, um, who are some of your favorite um, authors? My favorite authors, um, there's a Brazilian writer named Jorge Amado. He's written a lot of stuff about Baja. I'm very interested in that part of the world. So there's a lot of books about, about that. And I was, that's, he's one of my favorites. There's a fantasy writer named Charles Lent. Um, and there's Octavia Butler read most of her work as well. Um, so people like that are my favorites. Okay, and what would you say, um, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into writing um, science fiction? Like what, um, yes, go ahead. <laughs> Good question. I think read. Um, I, I've, over the years, I, and again, I've been on panels and I've been to conferences and I've been surprised that a lot of authors, they write their books, but they don't read the field. And I just think in any profession, whether you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're an athlete, you study those who come before you and you study the industry. And I just think first and foremost, reading fuels the pump for writing. And I, again, I've been surprised at a lot of people who don't read widely or they read in their narrow specific genre, which, you know, that that's good and okay, but story is a universal language. And I think first and foremost, people need to read and understand how this author put this together, how his author created characters, how this author used a theme. So I think first and foremost, I would give that as advice. And then the other advice I would give, everybody's writing journey is their own journey. Um, like I said, I've gone through my ups and downs with this business. You know, obviously I wrote my books thinking, like Betty mentioned, hey, the world's gonna come and you know, it's, it's, it's been a challenge, but all I can say is all it really matters about the work. If you truly meant to do this, you will do this. And I just read like any aspect of life. So I would think is if you're truly meant to do it and sales are not going where you thought or things keep going because people do want stories. We are, as human beings, we want stories. And the more we have stories out there, people will find them. So that would be my other piece of advice as well. Okay, and Marion, where can readers find you? Basically on my website at marion-hill.com. It has all my books there. Um, I've been a book review blogger for about 11 years. I've reviewed over 300 books on my, on my blog. So you'll see a lot of my book reviews as well as my books. And I'll drop that in the chat as well. And, um, and also I'm, I'm active on Instagram at, at marhill31. I post a lot of my book reviews there. I'm, I love music, I love art, so I do a lot of posting of that kind of things there as well. It's not really about me personally, it's just about the things I like. So a lot of people I gravitate towards that. And I'm also active on Litzy, which is another book. It's kind of a bookstagram site um, as well, kind of similar to Goodreads, but it's more of a picture format. So I'm there as well at Cambio One. So you can reach me at those places there. Okay. All right. Well, Marion, please um, drop all your links in the chat. And I do thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate having me, have you having me on here. Okay, well, you have a good day. You too, thank, thank you. you. Radio, thank you. Um, yeah. Kay Ray is ready to jump in, but Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson is also, she's here now, she's on the road. Okay. So she did be, was able to come in, but KR was ready to jump in. So thank you, Kay Ray. We're gonna slide it to you after we slide it to uh, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. Back to you, okay. Radio. Okay. Okay, and now we have um, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. Hi, Dr. Rhonda. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. You look beautiful, by the way. I love the earrings. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. You look beautiful as well. Thanks for joining oh, us today. Oh, thank you. 
And I apologize for um, running late. We, I'm doing some family stuff and wound up doing too many things at one time. So I apologize to you. That's okay. That's okay. I know that things happen. <laughs> so tell us about your, tell us about um, meeting the world solutions. All right. Yeah. Meet the world image solutions. Um, I'm a literary and publicity services company. Um, so my main, my main focus is um, literary um, support. So my services are editing, ghostwriting, um, book coaching, um, thing, things to that effect, but I also do um, press release services. So people who have a, um, a book or maybe they have a business and they want to um, announce it to the world, they can come to me and I can not only write their press release, but I have a distribution service so we can actually distribute it, not, not just to your local media, but we can um, distribute it to national media, to, um, to writers, magazines, and um, any, anybody who kind of aligns with your industry for your book. So um, I truly enjoy um, Meet the World Image Solutions. Um, I love being able to support authors. And um, another part of what I do is working with Black Authors Matter TV. I'm a co-host for um, Black Authors Matter TV along with Gwen Richardson. And we air a two hour show every Tuesday night um, I'm, I'm on the East Coast, so I'm going to say from 8 to 10, but um, um, in the central region, of course, it would be 7 to 9, um, where we highlight authors, uh, we promote their books, and um, it's, it's just a blessing. It, I'm, I enjoy being a blessing to others, being, being able to help people um, to um, not only support their careers, but to um, support what they're doing, you know, and let everybody know who they are, because um, I know what it was like when I was a new author trying to get out there and we're blessed with social media now, but when I became an author, um, we didn't have as much social media. So we were driving to all of these different cities <laughs> trying to sell our books and that was tough. So I know what that was like. Um, and, I, and I know what it's like trying to get people to believe in your work. So being able to help people with that, like I said, I, I find that to be a true blessing. Okay, and tell us about um, your latest book. Okay, well, my latest book is A New Renaissance. It's actually an anthology. Um, what I did was I called on 11 other authors to um, have, to create some original fiction. Um, so we, we see a lot of anthologies that are um, nonfiction, but I really, because I'm a fiction author and I've always been a fiction author to my heart, um, I wanted to have a collection of stories um, that celebrated African-American fiction. And plus, with this being 100 years after the, um, the um, Harlem Renaissance, I wanted to bring these authors together um, and have a new renaissance. Um, because just like we celebrated our art 100 years ago, we can celebrate our authors 100 years later. So um, the, um, the stories that are in the anthology are all beautiful stories. They're um, multi-genre. Genre. So you're not just reading one type of story 12 times. We even have a special children's section. Um, my, my daughter was actually one of the authors in the children's section. She's right back there. Say hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so um, that that is a new renaissance. Um, and what I'm doing right now is I'm doing a special promotion. Um, my goal is to sell 200 paperback copies of a new renaissance. And... Um, what we'll, what we'll do once we reach that goal of 200 books, $1,000 will be donated to the March of Dimes to help fund um, research for prematurity awareness. Oh, very good, very good. So what would you say, um, what would you say is, um, what can an author, what can an author do to best promote themselves? Oh, a number of things. And I'm really glad you asked that question. I actually created an entire guide to help um, authors to find not just um, free promotion. A lot of times we look for free promotion and you should look for free promotion, but there are some ways where you can get your um, work out there to a bigger audience when you do some paid promotion. So what I did was I actually created a guide called the Author Success Guide um, that has a number of ideas um, from free to out of the box to paid ideas on getting your work out there. And there are a um, number of things that you can do. One um, very easy thing is to put your link in your um, signature block on your um, email. That's a very simple way to do it. 
Um, another thing to do is make sure that you're social on social media. It's one thing to just throw all of your information on there. Every time you have something new, you, um, you throw your um, advertisements onto social media. But the thing is, you'll get a larger reach if you actually support other people on social media. So comment on their posts, um, get to know other people because um, the more you get to know other people, the more the algorithm sees that you are, you are actually being social on social media and they will cast your um, information um, into a much wider net. Um, the other thing about it is, is when you are actually supporting other people, those people were gonna, are gonna support you back. When I posted that I was doing this um, promotion um, with the new Renaissance, I got a bunch of shares from people, even if they even if they didn't buy the book. And I think that's something else that we have to remember is that um, a person doesn't have to buy your book to support you. Sometimes just sharing the information and letting people know other people know what you're doing is a huge help as well. So when you actually um, get people to share your information, your your information is going to a much wider net and more people know what you're doing and um, more people are apt to buy your book. So get social on social media, get people to know who you are, support them so they'll want to support you back. And then you can, you'll can you actually find yourself um, being able to sell more books that way. Now, what would you say is one mistake, one mistake that um, new authors and writers make? I'm sorry, excuse you said, what's a mistake that new writers make? Yes. Well, one of the, one, yes. One of the, yeah, one, one of, of the biggest mistakes that um, new authors make is feeling like you are um, you have to rush your timeline. Um, when you're writing your first book, you don't have any deadlines. Just have fun with this time. Um, you know, get, do the research that you need. So um, whatever book you're writing, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, that has that air of realism to it, that people that you come across as you know what you're talking about. Also take that time to read over your story a couple of times and get a good editor and a beta reader. Um, I, I'm a big proponent of using beta readers and a beta reader should not take the place of an editor, but it helps you to find um, those things that you've turned a blind eye to. Excuse me, I know this shadow is kind of crazy on my face. Oh. <laughs> In the car, that's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm um, using a beta reader. And sometimes what happens is that when we're when we're new, we're so excited about getting our book out of there, out there, and we want everybody to read our book, and we skip a lot of steps that would have made our book more successful, such as reading over it, such as getting a beta reader, such as hiring an editor. Um, another thing that we do is sometimes we we write the book. We get it out there and then we want everybody to buy it, but we didn't tell anybody that, whoa, you're crazy out there, girl. <laughs> but, but we never told anybody that we were writing a book. So my point in all of that is sometimes it's best as you're writing the book, promote your book, let people know what you're doing, um, bring them in on your process. And then if you do that, um, by the time the book is out, you've actually built up so much excitement about your book that people want to read it. So don't wait until you're absolutely done and you're published to start promoting your book is basically what I'm saying. Okay, and where can people find you? Well, you can find me, I'm on um, Instagram at Meet the World Image Solutions. I'm on um, Facebook, those are my primary ones, is Facebook and um, Instagram. And you can find, find me at, at Meet the World Image Solutions on um, Facebook as well. If you go to my website, which I will put in the chat, um, www.mtwimagesolutions.com. And that, okay. that would be my website. I love to hear from people. So um, reach out to me. And um, and anybody who, who's worked with me will tell you that I'm very accessible. If you reach out to me, I will reach out back to you. Okay. Okay, well, well, Rhonda, please go ahead and um, drop that in the chat. And I do thank you very much for um, coming today. Oh, no, and I thank you for doing this. Congratulations. I know you've been doing this for 14 years, and I've been watching you over the years, and I'm love, I love what you do to support authors, and I love what you're doing with this, um, with this festival. 
Um, congratulations on pivoting because I know this was an in-person festival at one time. So thank yes. you for all that you do and continue doing what you're doing. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. You have a great one. Too. Okay, so now we have K.R. Ray. How are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having us. And as Dr. Rhonda said, for putting on this fantastic um, event uh, year after year after year and being able to do it during the pandemic as well. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So tell us, uh, so tell us about your latest series. Yes, so we have the Colors Trilogy. So it starts with the colors of friendship. I tell people it starts with friendship. It may or may not go to love. So you have the colors of love. And at the end of it all, you find out people's true colors. So that's the Colors Trilogy. It's a new adult contemporary uh, series. So think of it as a darker, different world or um, the best man college years. What made you, what made you um, pick adult contemporary, well, young adult contemporary, as opposed to other genres? So when the books were published 2013, 2014, it was supposed to be this brand new genre that was going to take off. Um, it didn't as much. It kind of morphed a little bit more into romance, which I have romance in the books, but they're not traditional <laughs> romance books because three main characters, uh, Melody, Lance, and Amani. But I really just wanted to shine a light on college life and some of the decisions you make during college that can take your life in a whole different way than you were expecting. And um, especially with the Colors Trilogy, uh, two of the three main characters are African-American, one's half and half, but for all intents and purposes, Melody looks like she's white. Caucasian. And so playing with the idea of race relations and what that does when you're in a, a predominantly white university and you're having to kind of balance the line and, and you know, fit into both worlds. So there was a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> That's why I knew adult though. <laughs> okay. okay. And so how did you, um, did you have to do any research for that being that it's like a young young adult contemporary, like, you know, with the language and everything else. <laughs> so I, I always, I'm an engineer undergrad, so I research everything, <laughs> but um, definitely that and just trying on my own experience, uh, wound up going to school in a predominantly white engineering school in state New York as well, even though the book's totally fictional, it is not off my own life story, but people will tell me all the time, they're like, you're like Dick Wolf. You rip things straight from the headlines. And I've had um, book club members go, were you in my college dormitory? Because I swear you were writing about some of the stuff that we were going through and what we did, et cetera. So it's just making sure that things are as realistic as possible, um, but a very entertaining read. So... <laughs> So what are some of the things, I saw that you are working on a fantasy series. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. So my son, um, as I went through and worked on or promoted the Colors Trilogy, my son would always run up to me when I come back from whatever event. He's like, who did you meet this time? And like, how many people did you get to speak to? And what did you get to do? And so he, he laughingly said, mom. I want to write a book too. And I'm like, no, no, no. You don't write a book because of that. You write because you have characters that you want to get out there and stories you want to get out there. Um, not because you get to meet like famous people or anything like that, because none of that's guaranteed, right? Most authors realistically sell 100 to 250 books total during their whole like life of their blood. So I said, none of that's guaranteed, right? And he goes, I don't care. I want to write a book with you. So we did the whole young adult fantasy. We finished writing um, the first book in the series in October. We've had it um, to, um, professionally edited. We are in the process right now of pitching to literary agents. We're actually going to try to do it traditionally published this time to kind of get um, a bit of a bigger, you know, that bigger exposure and reach. So 
fingers crossed so far just finished doing new york pitch and we went four for four with uh agents requesting our our material so prayers everybody <laughs> yes. can you give us a snippet of them uh, like as far as like what it would yeah what it's going to be about what they're going yes. to be about Definitely. So the tagline that has been totally getting all of the agents on board is think uh, teenage black Jason Bourne meets Star Wars and New Hope. So <laughs> it is, it's, a, it's a little bit of everything out there. But uh, as Marion said, just pulling from so many different genres and just coming up with things that you want to see. You know, we want to show multiculturalism we want to show these cool fantastic worlds and so that's what the book's about so basically it's a 16 year old Taj wakes up after an attack with a mysterious case of amnesia and a clone and where they live on their planet cloning is illegal and will get you banished from your kingdom so you have to find out like how they figure out who did it and uh, if he's the clone or not and what goes on. So, <laughs> What made you want to jump into fantasy? It was just, it was one of those things um, like Marion and some of the others said, um, Michelle and the Rice, like reading, I've always loved reading. I've started reading at the age of three and I read across all the different genres. Like you put a book in front of me, I'm like, oh, cool, let's check this out. And so for us, especially with my son wanting to write with me on this one, I just asked him what it, what would he like to see? And he said, oh, it would be great and fantastic to have somebody that looks like me on the front of a, a fantasy and sci-fi cover. So I'm like, let's make it happen. So we did. So what have um so how do you balance writing and your <laughs> and other parts of your life? How do you balance it all? So being that I have like engineering as my undergrad and I work in project management, there's a lot of project management <laughs> that goes on uh, because you do want to be able to balance your full-time career with your writing, with the family, and just all your other interests. So um, I love traveling, even though, you know, with the pandemic that's closed down a bit, or um, being able to read other, read and support other authors, love watching movies. So you just have to put in the things that make you happy and make sure that you're balancing your life and, and trying to get a little bit of time for each of them. And uh, just go from there. And what have you, what is one of the biggest things that you've learned about the literary industry? It's crazy, <laughs> but I like crazy. I'm a little crazy, so it's fine. Uh, my husband jokingly says uh, the publishing industry is just not same <laughs> kind of thing, but I, I love it. And so for me, especially with the Colors Trilogy, uh, like so many others on here, I went through, created my own publishing imprint and learned the business. And if you're doing this to, if you're doing this as a passion project, you don't necessarily need to learn about the industry. But if you really wanna make a career out of this and you wanna reach uh, readers and get your story out there and just connect with other really fascinating people like this, you, you have to understand the business. And so really being able to go through and learn the process of what it takes from the beginning all the way to the end and continuing on from there because you want to continue engaging with your readers and just sharing with others. So learn the business. <laughs> and then where can where can readers find you? Yes, so I am putting in the chat. Um, all of the different places you can find me. Uh, start with my website, kra.com, but I am like everybody else on many different platforms. Uh, we're we're gonna, uh, LaShonda will finally get me on TikTok, but uh, 
<laughs> I'm on Facebook most of the time. I've just started on Instagram, so I'm still kind of playing around with that platform. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Bookbub, Goodreads. So follow me everywhere, and I follow back. So definitely. Okay. Well, KRA, it was so good to meet you and to and to have you come here. Thank you so much. The pleasure was all mine. And I'll even put the um, book links in the Could chat you post too, them so. again? Could you post them again? Because uh, someone posted and it pushed it up and we can't see it, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the one that I just posted there. Okay, are... just now at 454, that one we can see. Thank you. Okay. okay. Perfect. Awesome. Right. Thank you Thank so much. You're welcome. Okay, and now we have um, Dr. Emily Wilcox. Hi, Dr. Emily. Oh, what? You're you're on you're on mute. Wait, still on mute. You're unmuted on, on our end. You're muted on your end. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. so while she gets that together, let me bring in Dorothy. Okay. Um, you said she's the one on the phone number? Yeah, she's on the, yes, she's on the phone. Okay, so here we go. Okay, and we are talking with Dorothy, is it Parham? Dorothy, Dorothy, you can unmute and talk. You're not on screen because you're not on video. Oh, okay. Wait, I think. Hello, Dorothy. Uh, Hello, Dorothy. Can you hear me? Okay. So she's having technical difficulties as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so at this point, why don't you do a little station identification? Um, sure. especially inviting to join the Facebook group. Sure. Okay. So, so hi everyone again. This is um this is um Radia Hubbard, and we're at the 14th annual um Great Midwest Book Fest. And also, you can go on our Facebook page. You can go on Facebook and join the um. It's called the Urban Reviews Facebook group. Um, we have like different articles to interact. Um, sometimes we have um and ask the author series where we just have like random authors come in and you can ask questions and everything for the day. Um, we might start redoing that. Um, that's an extension of um, actually that Facebook page, that Facebook group was an extension of an old Yahoo group we used to have. You guys remember those? <laughs> All of those went away, but yes, I started as a Yahoo group. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can go ahead and do that. And also, um, you can follow, you can follow, um, Urban Reviews online on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, it's Urban Reviews. Um, also you can follow, I also have a Black Book Releases page on Twitter. Um, it's also a Black Book Releases page on Instagram, and that's where I post, um, different releases. We also have um, promo opportunities there as well. Um, you can also go ahead and we have, oh, we also have reviews on urbanreviewsonline.com. And so you can also, um, you know, go over there and look at the reviews and everything else that we have going on. And let's see here, just looking at some of the comments here, I just want to thank everyone. Um, for joining us and everything today. And oh, the surprise that I have is for everyone who actually pre-registered on, on Eventbrite, you will have a chance to win one of four Amazon $25 gift cards. Now I'm not picking, I'm picking those today. So I'm just saying tonight. So I'm gonna pick those tonight and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to send an email through Eventbrite. So it's going to be random. And um, shout out to um, Cheryl McClinton. Um, she actually donated that for us. So we, um, 
I thank her for that. And um, so let me see here. So what we're doing Let's here- Let's try Dorothy one more time because I keep asking. Emily, if you're ready, please raise your hand and I'll bring you back on. Um, we're gonna try with the call in with okay. Dorothy uh, okay. once again. Okay, Dorothy, okay. I'm going to, you have the floor. And Emily raised her hand. Okay, Dorothy, you have the floor. Dorothy going once. Dorothy? Okay, I'm going to slide it over to, I'm gonna bring Emily up once again. Okay. okay. Dr. Emily, can you hear us? Okay, wait. I can hear you. Oh, wait. I did hear her, hold on. I think you're on, wait, Try I'm- Try it again. Try it again. If you're on two different devices, you're going to have to log off of one of them. Okay. Jesus. So we have you on video on one, and then we have you on audio on one. So you have to log out of one of the devices. The audio is Dorothy. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's ending in three three. That's Dorothy. We can't okay. seem to get her on. So, Can Emily. You see now? No, 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 no. Oh gosh. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. What you'll need to do is whatever the device is that we can actually hear you in. I'm going to remove you from the screen. Um, and, and mute that up. And let's see, can, what other, how else are you logged in here? Cause it's not a by phone number. What other device are you logged in as? I'm using. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm on my phone. Okay, let's go. Um, I was using there. the phone for sound for because you couldn't hear me on my laptop. Oh, okay. But because you have the portal open for it to hear, it absorbs the sound and it gives an echo. So you're going to have to do it this way. Okay, yeah, I've turned it off. Okay. Okay. Well, hi, Dr. Emily. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming today. Um, tell us about your children's book. Okay. My children's book. The first title in the series is called My Doctor Looks Like Me. It is a book series that I have written to inspire black and brown children to pursue big dreams. Our mission in writing the book is to plant small seeds to create big change. I want our young, and black, young black and brown children to see images of themselves that they can actually identify with. Uh, because I firmly believe that seeing role models that are adult versions of themselves can do wonders for the psyche of a child. Um, the book is actually kind of my own story. Um, growing up in Waterbury, Connecticut, I had never seen a Black physician in my life. There were none. <laughs> so um, my parents would tell me all the time, you know, you're doing great in school. You're going to be a physician. You know, you, you're going to, that, that's what you want to do. Go for it. But I had no role models to look at. Um, I was discouraged by my friends. They thought I was crazy. Um, even my teacher, I remember telling my um a geography teacher in high school. She asked me one day what I wanted to do. And I told her I wanted to be a doctor and she laughed in my face. You know, she actually told me um, our colored do well in this school. You might find a good job as an administrative assistant, you know, if you keep your grades up. So that's what I had to deal with. And then going away to college um, was no different really because my academic advisor at the University of Connecticut uh, would not sign off on my pre-med courses. He told me that I should be a nurse, 
and that um, medicine was not a place for black women. I actually had to go over his head um, to the Dean to get my coursework signed. So I know the struggles that our kids go through. Um, and over the years, you know, the story had been in my head, like one of these days you have to put it on paper. Um, and a few years ago, I had the opportunity to do it. And I started writing the series. The My Doctor Looks Like Me title is only the first. It's written in four different versions for a black girl, black boy, Hispanic girl, Hispanic boy. And I plan on writing many more titles as time goes on. Okay. And did you, did you find any difficulty as far as um, going from the medical field to being a children's author, children's book author? No, I, I did not um, because I'm still in the medical field. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a board certified orthopedic surgeon. I've been practicing now for about 30 years. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also, I was the second black female joint reconstruction specialist in the world. And now I'm one of six, so we got four new ones. So. I've always known how blessed I was to be in a position that I'm in. And I've always mentored to college students and high school students um, and allied health students. So as I got older, I started trying to figure out ways to reach children at a younger level because some, I was finding that by the time I get to the high school kids, some of their minds are already made up of what they can or cannot accomplish. So I, I was searching for ways and then, you know, I decided to write the book, hoping that we can um, get the book going. The book is just a start. You know, I, I, I always have plans. <laughs> I want to start a club, you know, when we get a sufficient amount of members where the kids can actually come in and log in and talk to professionals such as myself, um, lawyers, you know, whatever profession, pilots, geologists, and so that they feel comfortable, so that they know that it's not out of reach for them. You know, that, that's my plan. Okay, okay. And how has your experience um, with the literary industry, um, how has that been for you so far? For me, it's been, you know, I've, I've gotten quite a lot of press, which is good. Um, but as far as marketing, you know, I'm, I'm a dumb doctor. I don't know about marketing. <laughs> so we're putting together a marketing team so that we can do a better job of outreach. Um, but everybody has been welcoming, you know, when people find out about the book title and what our goals are, what we're trying to accomplish, everybody has been helpful. But it is a different beast than I'm used to. <laughs> Yep. Yes, yes. And um, what would you say is one of the um, biggest things that you've learned so far um, being in the literary industry? One of the things I've learned is you can't stop. You have to keep um, the, um, putting it out there that you are there. You know, it, it's a constant grind. It's not, you can't just you know, make an announcement that, oh, I have this book, I have this series, and this is what I want. You actually have to put in the work. And, you know, it's, I'm learning as I go along. So I'm trying to be as present as I can, as much as my schedule will allow. Mm -hmm. And how do you, and speaking of your schedule, how do you balance your, your uh, nine to five job with your writing career? <laughs> um, I laugh because my sister tells me I have adult ADD. <laughs> um, I work all the time and I am one of those people who will work until I fall asleep. So um, I, I, I just do it. I work during the day, nine to five, like you said, in the office. And then usually um, I'm doing stuff in the hospital at night, um, but taking the time to write, what I do is just take time off. If I have an idea in my head, I start putting notes down. And then when it starts to come together, I will actually take time off work and put those ideas, you know, just write them out and, and, and go from there. 
Okay. Are you working on anything right now? Anything else right now? Yes, I have two more titles coming out. Um, my my vice president looks like me and my president looks like me. I actually started on those um, before before um, the Biden's inauguration. I just have not had the time to finish them. Yeah. So those are the next two titles. And then it will be my lawyer looks like me. So we have a list of titles that I've started writing. Um, we just have not um, gone on to publishing yet. Okay, so they're all, so it sounds like the, it's a common theme, like it's different, um, like it's different occupations and everything. Yes, yes. And the um, on our Instagram page, it's called Looks Like Me Books. That's where you can find us on Instagram, at Looks Like Me Books. So we want the kids, because we don't want, you know, we don't, not every child wants to be a doctor, not every child wants to be a lawyer, you know. Um, so we want to encompass as many occupations as possible and let the kids know that we have already broken the glass ceilings and it, they can just go right on through. Okay. And where can you, and where can we find you? I think you've already put it in the chat, but I do want you to drop it in the chat again, because I think it was, yes, go ahead and drop it in the chat, but where can we find you? Okay, the website is www.mydoctorlookslikeme.com. It's all spelled out. Um, and on Instagram, we are at looks like me books. So I'm gonna type it again. I was trying to type it and hold it and I hit the return button <laughs> before. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I think that this is a um this is this is a beautiful idea. Um as far as um I was looking at the chat here and one of the comments was um for Patricia Ballantyne, who's also an who's also an author, she said this is a beautiful idea that it would be so wonderful wonderful for our children to engage um, with black professionals. Yes, yes, because I look at my children and they're used to being around black professionals, so you know, it's no thing to them. And then I see other kids, you know, even in the office, kids come in with in the office or come in with their parents, and they're shocked that I am the doctor, you know, yes. and. They, they're shocked when I talk to them or try to get on their level because they think that, you know, um, I'm such a fairy tale character that, you know, that, that they can relate to. And I want the kids to know that we're people just like them and we, we want them to be heard. Okay. Well, Dr. Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really a pleasure. Well, thank you for having me and giving me the platform to speak. I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties. I had tested everything, everything was working, and then boom. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's technology. And then the last two years, we've had to like, I mean, from the last two years, I just think about, well, look, technology, if it's if it's wrong, if you know, anything can go wrong. So it doesn't, but we still have you here though. So yes, yeah, so it's not so that's not a big deal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well you have a good day and thank you so much you too thank you bye <laughs> okay so we're going to do our best to try this again um to try this again with um with uh dorothy mm -hmm. and i'm okay hold on for a second i wanted to click here and there Okay, Dorothy, we're gonna try this again. I'm going to, it, talking is, an enable, is enabled already. So I'm gonna ask you to unmute and I just clicked the ask to unmute button. Can you test it out for us, please? Dorothy? Let me take, I've got her in messenger. Please okay. unmute and talk. Okay, if not, we're gonna to have to wrap up. Dorothy, please unmute and talk. You have the floor. Going twice. Dorothy, please unmute and talk. 
I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, I know. I tried to message her too, and I haven't, and I haven't had a message in um, 13 minutes. Oh, she just messaged me, um, and then I told her to please unmute and talk. So she's, we've been going back and forth trying to get this done. Okay. So I don't think this is going to happen today. Okay. Um, I'll click the ask unmute button again. Uh, let's try it here and try one more thing here. This is allow to talk. There we go. See, it's hard for her to see the screen if she's on her phone and I don't mm -hmm. know. Okay, so on that note, back to Hello. 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 There we go. Hello. Hello. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, Ms. Kai. I appreciate it immensely. Hello? Okay, hi. hi, Dorothy. How are you? Oh, I'm elated now that, that, that we can actually communicate. Thank yes. you so much. Well, you're welcome. Um, Dorothy, um, tell us about your latest book. Okay. Actually, this book is a sequel to another book that was um, published over a decade ago called The Blues for Annie Mae. In that book, it actually reveals the trying times of this blues singer, singer that has, um, she has endured so much pain because of her mother, a, a mother that discriminated against her, against because she was dark skinned. Annie Mae was dark skinned. Gloria was light skinned. And she beat her because Selma, the mother, felt that her light skinned da daughter couldn't endure the pain that her dark skinned daughter would. And this drove Annie Mae to become a blues singer, but did a drug uh, um, uh, addict. And in and she died in 1989, which is at the pinnacle of the AIDS epidemic. And the new story, Song for Selma, begins when, she's, when Selma is there at her daughter's funeral. And she's thinking everything is fine, but her light-skinned daughter, Selma, isn't there. And she wants her to be there. She needs her to be there. But because of the daunting guilt, she cannot take this alone. And she thinks everything is fine. She doesn't need her daughter's hand. She walks up to her coffin, to her daughter's coffin, who has endured so much pain at her mother's hand. And she hallucinates. She no longer sees this coffin with her, da with her daughter nestled inside. The coffin burns. The, um, the, uh, the plants on the side of the uh, coffin, they burn and sway. And it becomes a fire shield of madness. But she doesn't want anyone to know this. And this one... Elder says, Selma, are you all right? And she wants to jerk her head away and say, of course I'm all right. Well, that's why I'd be all right, but all right. But she is aware of the audience watching because she knows that a lot of times at black funeral, funerals, they want to get on the hotline. They want to call and say, girl, you should have seen how she showed up. That's why they should, they come to the funerals. They don't come because out of sorrow. They come because they want to feed the madness, the madness that makes themselves feel more important. Okay. And she buries her daughter, but then she finds out and she goes looking for her high yellow daughter, her high yellow daughter that she has held in the utmost esteem because her color. And I think still this, this was, uh, this takes place in the, in the late eighties. I think now we are somewhat jumping over that river that high yellow people are, are held in esteem. It's still there. The waters are still stagnant. 
And she goes in the bathroom and she finds a high yellow daughter going crazy. And we all know that black people, a lot of black people from 30, 40 years ago feel we have endured kidnapping. We've endured rape. We we would do a PSTD. We cannot endure luxury of going crazy. But yet, her daughter, the high yellow uh, esteemed daughter, has gone crazy, and she witnesses this on the floor. Okay, now Dorothy, what makes you, so just wanted to just wanted um to ask like what made you um write the sequel um after ten years of being away. Actually, I had tried and stumbled so many times, Miss Nye, to write the sequel, but it, I had so many glitches in my computer, and I myself and I myself um, and I endured depression. So, so many times after I wrote it, and um, because of family members, it, it was. Um, it cracked my um manuscript my manuscript would crash, but I was still trying to persevere. Family members said you cannot give up. I think I endured over five or seven crashes on my c- c- computers. Okay. Okay. And then where can we find more about you and your books? Uh on Amazon.com. Kindle, and it's now in paperback also. Okay. Okay. Do you have a website that anyone can refer uh, to? No, not right now. Unfortunately, I do not. Thank you for asking. Okay. Okay. Well, Dorothy, I do thank you um, for joining us today. Thank you for having me today. Okay. And thank you so much. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Have a pleasant evening. You too. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Radio? Yes. You. Okay. All righty. Well, your time flies when you're having fun because it is the end of the Great Midwest Book Fest. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, It has been truly a pleasure. I didn't even know that it was almost the end here. So um, I do want to just thank everyone for participating um, and just um, sticking with us, um, sticking with me all these years. Um, Even through the pandemic, we had to, you know, we had to go ahead and, you know, pivot. Um, But next year is our 15 year anniversary. So we are going to be in the Milwaukee area. And once again, of course, I do. appreciate Nelena Kai. She is my silent, I always say she's my silent partner here. <laughs> so I do thank, so I, yeah, I thank everybody. I thank all the authors. I thank everyone. And I will be following up with who, who are going to be the winners for the, um, for, for the, uh, uh, for a uh, $25 Amazon gift card. So with that, um, I thank you for joining us and I enjoy hanging out with you. Did you have anything, um, Nelena? <laughs> uh, no, just make sure you keep up with the tribe and also make sure you email me at nelenakai at gmail.com. It is now up to 12 free books that we're giving away from tribe members. Uh, so if you email me, I'll copy and paste and give you all of the links to get to those and um, hope you guys will stay connected to us. And also DM me on Facebook or on Instagram to get the free registration for the Cavalcade of Authors Book Club Summit that is happening in October. Uh, Let me share my screen if I got that correctly. Um, This is basically a two day thing where we're gonna have uh, the tribe doing readings, giveaways and first looks at new books, book bingo, games and fun, all tribe happy hour, the whole thing. A lot of free book downloads and discounts to our next trip. We're going to Dubai um and november if there's anyone who is interested in making that trip with us you know we have a very reasonable rates for our rooms it's like um what is it 114 dollars per night um and that includes a buffet daily buffet breakfast so we're 18th annual cavalcade of authors in dubai uh brenda 
Jackson will be there. Uh, Celeb Honeybee will be there and definitely tribe members will be there as well. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I also have some books that are 99 cents, Promise Me a Miracle, if you download it on Apple Books. Um, and you will also get a free download of one of select books uh, from tribe members that are different from the free books that I gave away, which is right here. If you download Promise Me a Miracle on Apple Books, you will send me the proof of purchase and I will give you a code to download one of these books for free. So on that note, once again, Nalena Kai, www.nalenakai.com. There are three free books there on the first page. So scroll down. We just want to give you a little taste of what we're like, and then you can see what else you want from us. On that note, Radia, thank you for the opportunity to be with you. I've been your wing woman all day and uh, sliding it back to you. All righty. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, don't forget to, um, you can follow Urban Reviews online. Um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok is under me though, Radio Hubbard. And then don't forget to um, stop by urbanreviewsonline.com. Um, also um, stop by greatmidwestbookfest.com to keep abreast of like the next year's um, festival. And that's all I have. Um, happy Saturday and thank you guys once again. Bye. <laughs> You're mute. Stop recording and you want to take it off Facebook Live. Uh